great to feel like you're pushing and you're peaking at the right time. I don't know the last time I felt the Leafs were peaking going into the playoffs, right? And I don't, I don't think that that's a great mindset or a great momentum to go into uh, the playoffs. I think health's important. It's very curious, and Luke Fox brought that up too, about Mitch Barner not coming out for practices still yet. Like, I mean, he's going to be an important piece. So can you be healthy? Can you have good habits? Can you find ways to push the pace in these big games? Like, you don't need to go crazy over the next four weeks, but you should be playing your best hockey right before you win the playoffs. That's when it really matters. Like, the Florida Panthers, I just can't stop picturing how good they looked into the playoffs and look where it took them. Like, so, I don't know. I don't know how they can manifest manifest that, but they got to find a way. Uh, Corey Perry, by the way, the last uh, player on the ice here. Of course. Did he shoot exiting. one in the net down there? Uh, no. no. No, I don't think he, he did that. That might be, a, might be a playoff move from Corey Perry. Uh, I think it's the state of the defense score. Like, obviously, TJ Brody not playing again. The mental reset, very similar, as yeah. you mentioned, uh, to Ilya Samsonov. But to have, uh, like, no semblance of what the pairings and structure is going to look like whatsoever with this Maple Leafs blue line is concerning, right? Like, you'd like to have a couple pieces installed in place no more pieces other than Morgan added. Riley 1A, and he might not even be 1A because if he's got to play with Labushkin, how much time are you giving Labushkin per night? So it's kind of like everything is just up in the air when it comes to this defense core. And, yeah, is that something you can solve in three and a half weeks? I don't know, man. Is it something you can just put together hastily? I I'm not really sure. they got to start making some inroads, and maybe it's got to involve TJ Brody sooner than later because if he's going to be a part of it, you got to see him in there because you got to see what you got back there and got to see if it's going to work. So I, I do frankly worry, at least in terms of my concern list, the state of the defense for me has got to get ironed out pretty soon here or they're going to be scrambling when the playoffs begin, and that's not a good position to be in. And wouldn't it be a good thing to have in place for tonight when you play some of the best offensive players in the world? Well, we're going to see how that one shakes out. Um, we're going to take a quick break on the other side. We're going to talk uh, about our players to watch. We've talked about how tonight Zach Hyman could be on the cusp of something very miraculous, a 50-goal pace is a well, 50 goal night 50 could goal be ahead, and it could be right here tonight yep. of course he's got roots he's got lots of friends and family in the stands i don't know i'm always the person that likes the storyline and i think that could be one of them and we talked about it all game and i will say if things get out of hand like if this is a weird game they're gonna be the, the, the edmonton oilers know that Zach Hyman is two goals away. They are well aware. They would love to see him get those two goals tonight. So let's say, you know, it's it's six one in the in the third period. They might be looking for young Zach Hyman to get number young fifty. Young Zach Hyman. He's young enough. How how old is Zach Hyman? To get his fiftieth goal here at Scotia Bank Arena. That's young, I'll take it. <laughs> That's young, right? That's young. <laughs> Trust me. All right, we'll take a quick break on the other side. We'll get you set for puck drop. You're listening to Molson Leafs Hockey on Sports Now five ninety the fan and the Maple Leafs Radio Network. And now it's time for our Subaru weather report. So, Harold, what's it looking like? Jim, we can expect more thunderstorms as the evening approaches, and then overnight... Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah, can I get uh, two number sixes with a side of curly fries? Hold the onions, please. Yeah. Uh, Harold, are you in the drive-thru right now? Jim, no one listens to this. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, great. Weather reports don't matter when you drive a Subaru. Visit your local Subaru dealer today and book a test drive during the all-weather drive event. Move up to Heathwood. Hi, I'm Hugh Heron. Experience true luxury at Williamsburg Green and Kitchener. Heathwood's all-brick single-family homes come with a long list of features you've always dreamed of. Gourmet kitchens, freestanding tubs, and even fully finished lower levels. Dare to compare and you'll see why it's time to move up to Heathwood. Learn more at Heathwood.com. We interrupt this commercial break for an important news bulletin. 
Desjardins Insurance was spotted downtown helping everyone in its path. Unpredictable weather, fallen tree branches, wayward baseballs flying towards second-story windows. Desjardins Insurance is helping Canadians through it all. Is there nothing this large and friendly ally won't do for neighbors in need? Never before have we seen insurance with a heart so big it shows. Desjardins Insurance, home and auto. Learn more at Desjardins.com slash heart. Their powerful voices transcend language. Latinas in Music, a Sirius XM channel featuring the trailblazing women shaping global culture through song. Latinas in Music. Throughout Women's History Month on the all-new Sirius XM app. And now for a limited time on Channel 107. The Points with Boomer Gordon. Andrew Burnett is your Jack Adams winner. 70 points in 52 games. You project that over 82, Jake. That's an 111-point pace. So they've gone head-to-head with the big boys of the West all year. Andrew Burnett inherited a new GM in Barry Trotz and a sinking payroll. And he's got this team playing as well as any team in the NHL. Points with Boomer Gordon. 1 p.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Feel the passion of Major League Soccer all season long on Sirius XM FC. Stupendously magnificent! Every week, hear all the top matches, including every Inter-Miami game. Messi up over And get analysis and insight from our team of experts, like former MVP Tony Miola. He looks so confident. It's starting to look so easy. It's Major League Soccer's biggest season ever, and you can experience it on Sirius XM FC 157 and streaming on the all-new Sirius XM app. The Power Play with Steve Coolius. Toronto? Yeah, they don't have a face card. Like, they don't have an ace. Morgan's a jack. They have so many non-face cards that these guys are going to have the bullpen by committee. Because the real truth is this. They got a good forward group. But if you don't defend against Boston and Florida, you're not seeing Boston or Florida in round two. That's the exam, and the test will be on this defense. The Power Play. Weekdays, 3 p.m. Eastern. On NHL Network Radio. Sirius XM 91 and the Sirius XM app. Join me, Ward Stellick, and Scott Laughlin as we recap the night that was on NHL Morning Skate, weekday mornings at 7 a.m. Eastern on NHL Network Radio, Sirius XM 91. The biggest names in the game. Trying to get behind, wrist the line, and walks in, put it between his legs, shoots it, score! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Hi, this is Ray Hudson, and for all the biggest matches from Club Soccer's Holy Grail, the UEFA Champions League, tune in to Sirius XM FC 157. The best hockey lives here. Burns gets it back. Stick handles to the backhand. Moves in front. Score! NHL Play by Play on Sirius XM. Hockey lives here. Your destination for everything on the tour. Hear live, hole-by-hole coverage and expert analysis. PGA Tour Radio. Sirius XM 92. I'm Frank Chapp. Connor Dewar came over from Minnesota and... Uh, Beaumont product, Noah Greger, and then Pontus Holmberg will center Nick Robertson and the uh, physical one, Ryan Reeves on defense, Morgan Riley, Jake McCabe, Simon Benoit, and Connor Timmons, Joel Edmondson picked up at the deadline with uh, Timothy Lilgren, who will uh, quarterback their first unit power play tonight. That's a look at the lineups for the two teams. There is a total of 16 minutes to face off. This is Rogers Game Night on the Orders Radio Network. This International Women's Day, Windhouse is rallying the community to light the darkness. Throughout March, visit Kingsway Mall and view their 12-foot-tall interactive display, showcasing the real stories of individuals who have found refuge within Windhouse shelters. This immersive experience encourages everyone to take part in Windhouse's mission, cultivating a community where each donation not only brightens a room, but also helps to illuminate hope for those impacted by violence. Visit windhouse.org slash International Women's Day for more information. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. 
This is Oilers Rewind on the Oilers Radio Network. Oilers, the Buffalo Sabres. Puck brought in down the left side. Cousins will shoot. Save by Skinner. To the point for Byram. Will bring it down the right wing. His pass to the middle. Fanned on it. He'll go to Olofsson. He'll shoot and score. Back to Bouchard. Over to Nugent Hopkins. Left corner. Out to Dreisaitl. The shot. Score! Now to McDavid, to Ekholm, he'll bring it out, maybe two on one with Kane. And over the line is Ekholm, waiting, shoot, score! Into the Oilers zone, he'll go across to Clifton, his shot, nice save by Skinner! 3-10 to go here in the second, tied at two, Oilers and Saber. Kept in, Clifton got it, out, scores! Recovered by McDavid, his pass to the middle, scores! Zach Hyman, what a shot! Right wing to CC. He'll shoot it on that rebound. Scores! Connor Brown picked up the loose puck and makes it 8 3 for the Oilers. Welcome back, everybody. Want to mention at this time that tonight's Oilers Mega 50 50 jackpot is currently sitting at $620,000 and climbing. Buy your tickets now to be eligible for tonight's early bird prizes. 6 p.m. for two lower bowl tickets to see the Oilers face off against the San Jose Sharks on April the 15th and 7 p.m. for a thousand bucks cash. Tonight's Oilers Mega 50 50 is in support of every kid deserves a shot, a lasting symbol of hope, inclusivity, and empowerment ensuring every child in oil country has the opportunity to thrive. To Legacy Heating and Cooling, who's hot and who's not? Legacy Heating and Cooling, home and no payments and no interest for one year. Well, Matthias Eckholm's got five points in the last two games. But how about Evan Bouchard? He's on a five-game point streak. He's got seven assists during that stretch. He's plus nine. It's up to plus 28 on the season. Local ties for Sobeys and Safeway liquor, wine, spirits, beer, and so much more. And we'll focus on Stuart Skinner, tonight's starting goaltender. Of course, he played four years for the Lethbridge Hurricanes, wrapped up his junior career winning the WHL title with the Swift Current Broncos. Stuart Skinner, this will be his 115th NHL appearance, and he's at plus 5.4 goal saved above expectation out of town scoreboard there's 11 games today and tonight in the national hockey league three games have already gone final and they are as follows the philadelphia flyers get a late one from Tyson Forrester, two-goal performance from Travis Connecting. They beat the Bruins 3-2. The Islanders double up Winnipeg 6-3. And St. Louis wins in overtime. Brandon saw it 5-4 over the Minnesota Wild. No score, third period. Red Wings and the Preds. The Preds have points in 16 consecutive games. Ottawa, Edmonton's opponent tomorrow night. They're in New Jersey tonight. Panthers at the uh, New York Rangers. Calgary's in Vancouver. Tampa Bay Lightning at the LA Kings. The Blackhawks are in San Jose and the Columbus Blue Jackets at the Vegas Golden Knights. Last night, the Edmonton Oil Kings tied the game on an own goal. A delayed penalty on the ice against Koshala Valley, the best team in the American Hockey League, and they fired a pass back, and it went all the way into the empty net, and then Bakersfield wins in a shootout, 4-3. They are in Ontario tomorrow, and the Edmonton Oil Kings close out their regular season. Of course, they're going to miss the playoffs. They've had last eight uh, home games averaging north of 10,000 fans tomorrow at Rogers Place. They're in Red Deer tonight, by the way. It's a home and home. Tomorrow at Rogers Place, they've already got 16,000 seats sold for the final Oil Kings game of the year. Stay tuned following the game for the Alberta Blue Cross. Insurance, goal of the game. Whatever life brings you, we've got the coverage you need. Visit ab.bluecross.ca. We're looking at 11 minutes to face off. And this is Rogers Game Night on the Oilers Radio Network. Until April 20th, make the shift to more savings at Fountain Tire and get up to 25% off select tires, including Goodyear. Restrictions apply, financing available, book online today. Oh, I forgot to mention the bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. Oh, I knew 15 seconds wasn't long enough. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuff shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age.
Until April 20th, make the shift to more savings at Fountain Tire and get up to 25% off select tires, including Goodyear. Restrictions apply, financing available, book online today. Oh, I forgot to mention the bonus $50 off any service of $150 or more. Oh, I knew 15 seconds wasn't long enough. This is Rogers Game Night on the Oilers Radio Network. Coming back um, back home and playing for a former team and, um, you know, the opportunity to hit that and, you know, going into a game and saying a guy's going to score two goals, you know, it's it's difficult but uh the the pace that he's been scoring lately then you know it is uh, obviously achievable but it'd be pretty neat for him to do that here all right well let's bring a border inside the game annals rob brown back in the studio in edmonton and you don't know what it's like to be up there you had 49 one season uh and you did play with mario and there is a benefit to playing with one of those best players in the world. But Zach Hyman and you are, I think even you would concur, are about as polar opposite of players as you would find, Rob. Is that fair? Why, is it the defensive part of the game you're talking about? <laughs> or, the, or the physical side of the game? Or attention to detail? I mean, there's some minor differences, I guess. Rob, you had, but, you had 49 uh, goals and 114 points in one season. That was pretty damn good. <laughs> um... I, Hyman is just the perfect complimentary player. He just does everything right for you. And you can put him on any line that you want. You can put him on your first line, put him on your fourth line, anywhere in between. He's always going to give you the exact same effort. It's almost like he's a robot. You always know what you're getting with him. And all stars in the National Hockey League, they have ups and downs. There's going to be times where McDavid has four points in a row in four straight games, and then he has an off thing where he only has an assist or something. Hyman, you get the exact same. Now, sometimes the puck doesn't go to the back of the net, or sometimes the puck gets uh, waved off because it's somebody was in the crease or something. But uh, Hyman gives you the exact same. If he's not scoring goals, he's in on the four check, or he's penalty killing, or he's, he's being physical, getting the pl- puck out at the blue line, getting pucks in. And I, I think that the goals are just an added bonus. I think they wanted him for the way he played and for the yep. type of person he, he was or is. And now you're just getting the addition that he's going to be a 50-goal scorer this year. And uh, these are the guys that you cheer for. Somebody that's a good person off the ice, you cheer for them to have success on the ice. Right. Now, all that being said, Rob, I mean, when they signed him, we thought, hey, maybe 27. Yeah, you could do that. 36, wow, that's great. Nobody saw this. And it just... On a team that's already got McDavid and Dry Settle, it's just been an incredible story. So all that, you know, all that said, the orders, uh, the Leafs are still a really good team. They've got the same amount of points on the season. How they got there have been different. This is an awesome matchup, isn't it? It is. Now the Oilers have an advantage tonight with a couple big names out of the lineup for the Leafs. So the Oilers got to take advantage of it. But uh, the Leafs are, are trying to become a team that wins different ways. Uh, they they've got some good depth players. Uh, they try to play a much better defensive game than they have in the past, but at the end of the night, they got Matthews and Tavares and and, and Nylander, and the others have got Hyman and McDavid and, and Dreisaitl and Nugent Hopkins. This is a, a, a game of stars. So uh, I know that, and I know that you've talked about it a lot, there are a lot of guys on the Edmonton Oilers that are from Ontario. It makes a difference. When, the, when you go to your hometown with friends and family, with Mums and dads in the stands, you play better. You want to impress, and I would imagine the Edmonton Oilers are going to be very up for this game. What do you think of the Oilers loading up dry settle McDavid and Hyman right from the get-go in tonight's game, sliding Nugent Hopkins back in the middle between Fogel and uh, McLeod? Well, it's funny. We, we've been doing a lot of that on our, our post-game shows and then on podcasts, talking about what the Oilers lineup's going to look like come playoff time. I keep saying that the way that the Oilers are putting this line together whenever they need to get things going differently in a game. I, I believe this is how the Oilers are going to start the playoffs. I really do. I think Nugent, or excuse me, I believe that Dry Settle is going to play with Hyman and McDavid. Uh, this is the Oilers' best line. And I think that what we've seen, when the Oilers are having an off night, they put these guys together, nobody can contain them. So it's like, all right, we have. there's no one in the National Hockey League that can play against this line. Why not just start the line together? So this is what I believe is more looking like what the Oilers want come playoff time. So the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, they're going to be hard-pressed to find someone that's going to be able to go out there and slow this line down, especially the way that they're playing right now. Rob, let's go to the Ford Keys to the game. They're brought to you by Ford, the official partner of the Edmonton Oilers, built Ford proudly. 
Well, f first thing is stay disciplined. Both teams have got good power play, so you don't want to have Matthews and Nylander and Tavares out there on the power play time and time again. So you got to be very disciplined in this game. And I think the start of the game for the Edmonton Oilers, too, they've been a little sleepy against some of the lower-placed teams in the National Hockey League lately. The Leafs are not a lower-placed team. They are a very good hockey club, so I don't think you want to have a sleepy start if you're the Edmonton Oilers. That's our Inside the Game analyst, Rob Brown. More with Rob and Reed Wilkins during the end of the roll. First intermissions. Jack Michaels is pumped. He's jacked. He's stoked. And he loves doing games in this building. It is the Edmonton Oilers up next against the Toronto Maple Leafs. McDavid and Dreisaitl against Matthews and company at Scotiabank Arena on Four Dealers NHL Hockey when we return on the Oilers Radio Network. Real Canadian Superstore is your one-stop shop. Check out their flyer for their PC Ultimo offers. Deals on club size and no-name items. Always low-priced everyday items. There are so many ways to save for real at the Real Canadian Superstore. Uh, honey, I overloaded the washing machine and there's a mini waterfall pouring through the basement room. We'll fix it. Don't worry, babe. And I might have horribly shrunk your lucky jersey. Oh. Life happens. Access Insurance can help. The save of the game is brought to you by Access Insurance. When Albertans need it most, they know they can count on the Access Insurance team for a huge save. It's easy to switch and save. Check out their Google reviews. Visit accessinsurancegroup.com. Experience a game day meal that's second to none. Fanfare with Skip is your all-star lineup of local restaurants this hockey season. Watch Jack Michaels as he goes behind the scenes to give you the play-by-play -play action on each restaurant's connection to the community and our team. Visit edmontonoilers.com slash skip to watch this month's episode with meat. Then open your Skip app and tap in an order with exclusive fan access to game day combos and free delivery. Did somebody say Skip? Proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. Game on at City Ford. This month saw hockey's all-stars hit the ice. And an all-star is back at City Ford. For a limited time, get an amazing 0% financing on brand new Ford F-150s. Or choose to save up to $6,500 on the 2024 Ford Edge. And drive now. Pay later. Plus, spin and win a TV, Dyson vacuum, an iPad, or a trip to Vegas with your purchase. Visit City Ford on the St. Albert Trail. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love, in all of us command, with glowing hearts we Exclusive NHL broadcast. There he shoots and scores. Now it's Bryce on off the corner. McDavid centers Kane for the hat trick. He scores. All the action called by the voices who know the game inside and out. This crowd explodes. Bob Stopper and Jack Michaels on the Oilers Radio Network. Oh. A big weekend in the center of the universe, also known as Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Here at
at Scotiabank Arena, where last night Oklahoma City came in and steamrolled the Toronto Raptors. The Edmonton Oilers will look to do the same tonight at the expense of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Good evening, everyone, alongside Bob Stoffer. I'm Jack Michaels from our Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast location, high atop Scotiabank Arena, where Connor McDavid will take the opening faceoff against Austin Matthews. Edmonton in the white coming left to right in this first period. Hyman and Dry son of McDavid's line mates and Vinny Dayarnay back in the lineup making his 100th career NHL appearance opposite Darnell Nurse who takes a one-timer right off the draw and that was deflected grabbed by McDavid steered back to Vinny Dayarnay Nurse finds Dry Sidle and Toronto in trouble already McDavid rolls up top between circles tripped up by Nyes he's drawn a penalty 25 seconds into the hockey game heading to the bench is Stuart Skinner, tonight's starter for the Edmonton Oilers. Extra attacker on, it's Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And now Edmonton looks for the lead early against Toronto. The Oilers 9-1-2 in their last 12 games, coming off an 8-3, pummeling up Buffalo. It's Nugent Hopkins up the left-hand side, and now play is whistled down as the Maple Leafs were able to get a touch on that puck. But McDavid drawing an early trip against Matthew Nyes and Bob from the get-go. Edmonton looked ready to roll. Yeah, it's almost like a design face-off loss by Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl jump right in the seam and advance the puck. Oilers power play second in the league, 26.6%. Toronto's penalty killing one of their rare areas of weakness, 24th in the league at 76.6. And they've given up seven power play goals in their last six games, even as they've gone 4-1-1 one, and one over that stretch. Off the draw, it's Bouchard and Nugent Hopkins cross ice deflected away and grabbed by David Camp. Up the right hand side and tossed in by Connor Dewar, acquired from Minnesota. What I felt was a strange deal. Dewar gives the lead something and Minnesota didn't get much back. Here's McDavid driving in. Thought he had drawn another penalty. Got it back to Bouchard right point. He'll feather one to dry. Subtle right circle down low. McDavid hit his own man and that was Zach Hyman perched in front of the net. Got it back to Bouchard over to Nugent Hopkins. Down low in front one timer and dry Subtle had it blocked and then sent one skipping wide. Got it back from Connor McDavid. Here's McDavid to the net with a deflected pass, bounced up in the air. Nugent Hopkins fighting camp for it and maintains for Hyman, who comes in too shy of 50. Now it's Nugent Hopkins, one-timer ripped, and a save made by Ilya Samsonov, the Toronto starter looking for his first win against Edmonton. The Oilers have beaten him twice when he was in Washington. Samsonov, 18-6-7 and seven on the year with a save percentage south of 89. Stuart Skinner, 6-0-2 in his last last eight. Oilers still have a healthy 105 on this Atco Energy power play. Hard hit from Joel Edmondson. He finished McDavid on a rush. A little bit of a hit from behind, I thought. Off the draw, clear by Bobby McMahon. We didn't even get to our starting lineup. Edmonton was such a quick start. Flexibility within reach. That's Coventry Homes. Get back in the game with customizable designs by Coventry, the official builder of the Edmonton Oilers, who attack left to right. Bouchard to Drysaddle, deep right corner. Connor McDavid, power play still at 35 seconds. Drysaddle snaps it out. Nugent Hopkins to Bouchard, a drive and a save made by Samsonov. He'll squeeze it and wait for a faceoff and hope that the second unit comes out, which it does for the Edmonton Oilers right on cue under the direction of Chris Knobloch. It'll be Evander Kane, Corey Perry, Adam Henrique. And then you've got Nurse and Eckholm, who's been on a tear lately, just had a three-point night in Edmonton's thrashing of Buffalo. One of the strangest stats, Jack. The Oilers' power play is 35% at home, but it's only 18.2 on the road. Correct. Mediocre on the road. And lost momentum early in games on the road at times. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'd say they lost momentum there. Samson off with a pretty good, that looked like a trip, but no penalty was called and it's whistled up the right hand side. That was a penalty. Well, the Oilers, I, I thought McDavid he might was. have drawn he a hook as well. He was, no blocks. But not a five on three here in the first two and a half minutes. Darnell Nurse up the middle, off a skate, skipped high off the plexiglass. Ekholm tried to twist it inside, intercepted by William Nylander having a career year. Now he'll attack shorthanded. Wrist shot, kick save made by Skinner, Reed Bound, turned over by Kane to David Camp, who's able to melt the remaining time on 
the Edmonton power play. So the Atco power play fails to convert early, and Darnell Nurse is able to pick it up. Nylander wrestled it free. 38 goals, 91 points. That is a career high. The 38 goals is two off his career high set last year. Bob, sometimes it is difficult when you get a power play early. Yep. To have any kind of rhythm off a Toronto dump in. It's Cody Cece up the right hand side for Matias Eckel. Nugent Hopkins down the middle, one touch gone by Ryan McLeod. Nugent Hopkins centering McLeod and Fogel tonight instead of Dry Settles. Chris Knobloch finishing the game against Buffalo with a top line loaded. Here's a wrist shot coming over the line, fired high and wide by Max Domi of Toronto. Now Austin Matthews, the league leader with 57 goals coming in. He was stymied, and McLeod will kick it to the far side. Got to be got to be aware. One of the things the Leafs do really well, Jack, they can knock pucks down. they got great high-speed skills, great high players with hand-eye coordination, and they killed Edmonton last year here doing that. Well, one of those guys is not in the lineup tonight, and that's Mitch Marner, who arguably might be the best of the Toronto players that turning defense into offense quickly. Here's Nylander steering ahead for Timothy Lilgren. Punches it free to Tavares hit front one timer score. Tavares dug it out of the corner and finishing was Bobby McMahon. Tavares stays hot. That's his ninth point in his last three games plus. And Bobby McMahon has his 12th goal of the year. 1 0 Toronto at 4 17. And they've got support scoring from guys like Nyes, Robertson, and McMahon. And that time a fairly simple play, a chip in the corner. And the Oilers. Sam Carrick and Darnell Nurse, little late get back, and he chased the wrong spot. You're in zone defense, and I'm not sure where Nurse was going, but the Oilers had both defensemen in the right corner, and that enabled the window for the Leafs to get the puck in front of the net. 12 goals in only 45 games for Bobby McMahon, who's from Wainwright, Alberta, played in the AJ for the Bonneville Pontiacs. No way he should have been that open. Here's a quick flip in to the zone. Zach Hyman looking to regain some momentum for Edmonton, but when he goes down low to dry settle, it's stolen away, and Nylander will skate it out to center. Toronto not only without Mitch Marner tonight, but also Tyler Bertuzzi and Ilya Labushkin, both of whom are ill. Dry settle fires a pass. What timer at Coleman to say made off a setup from Connor McDavid. Samsonov has. Been sharp early. Jake McCabe trying to pin the puck along the end boards. Raked free by Hyman. Out to the point, and you've got Echo. Over to Bouchard. Dry sidle, beating McCabe behind the net. Surveying centering one timer, and wow. that one was ripped wide by Matias Echo. Just it, did not hit the net. He had a great look there. Excellent play by Leon. Tavares. And Lilgren with the helpers on Bobby McMahon's 12th. It's 1-0 Toronto. Leafs in the all blue with white trim. Defending their own line. David Camp at center ice. He'll hustle it across the Edmonton line. Lilgren activates. Forced out wide by Kulak. And a centering pass intercepted by Adam Enrique of Edmonton. And now it's a 2-1-1. Corey Pedrick over the line. Drops it. Nurse. Cece back to Nurse. And he didn't get a shot away. Taken down. Shoot the pop. Was Adam Enrique. And the Oilers come away with nothing off of that. Flipped back in by Connor Dewar and retrieved ultimately by Brett Kulak, who darts down the right-hand side. He'll shoot it in, though hit on the play by Benoit. Wrapped around the boards and out and pursued by Vinny DeArnais. He's been out the last couple of games. He was a little banged up in that fight with Josh Manson last Saturday in Edmonton, a game the Avalanche ended up winning in overtime. Darting down the left-hand side is Fogel. Fans on a wrist shot from the top of the circle. Ryan Reeves, one of the NHL legitimate heavyweights, fails to clear the zone. Nurse a shot, and that missed short side on Samsonov. Rebound, Nugent Hopkins. Sees it poke free to Benoit over to Connor Timmins, who played his first game on Wednesday since January. It's an extra guy, T.J. Brody, a healthy scratch for the first time in 11 years, and he scratched again tonight. He had given up 16 goals in his last 10 games. Dump in by Max Domi. Tracked down by Matias Ekholm up the left-hand side. 
Dry Settle fires a missile to McDavid ahead to Hyman. He juggles, got it back to McDavid. What timer ripped into the pads of goaltender Samsonov, who did not have it cleanly, and then McCabe took exception to some late wax from Connor McDavid, trying to pry that puck loose. And it was free for just a moment. Samsonov thought he had it frozen. He did not. They didn't blow the whistle. And McDavid digging in there, ultimately unable, and the clock now has run off an extra 15 or so seconds. They're going to have to get that figured out during the upcoming break. But Toronto's taking a 1-0 lead. Bobby McMahon's 12th from Tavares and Lilgren. And the Leafs lead it 1-0 on home ice at Scotiabank Arena in Greater Toronto. This is four dealers, NHL Hockey, News Radio Network. Be a savvy Edmonton hotel shopper. Book through EdmontonsBestHotels.com and receive up to $225 in cash rewards. There are over 50 member hotels to choose from offering their best value rates. EdmontonsBestHotels.com. Rewards with every booking. Hey, Paul Brandt here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm proud to call myself an Albertan. You know, after years of touring this great province in my Ford F-150, I've learned the value of driving a tough, capable, smart truck. Whether you're working for the weekend or long hauling it like I am, there's an F-150 for every Albertan with plenty of options to choose from, like available pro power on board. So if you're looking for a new truck, stop by your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. Get ready to live sky high. Sky Signature Suites offers remarkable units for rent, featuring sophisticated floor plans, designer finishes, resort-like amenities, and breathtaking views. Situated in the heart of Ice District, Sky is the address for socializing, dining, entertainment, and fun. A building like no other in a location like no other. Visit skysignaturesuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Be a savvy Edmonton hotel shopper. Book through EdmontonsBestHotels.com and receive up to $225 in cash rewards. There are over 50 member hotels to choose from offering their best value rates. EdmontonsBestHotels.com. Rewards with every booking. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Edmonton trails 1-0, 12.55 to go in the first period. They had to put about 25 seconds back on the clock. The Oilers' mega 50-50 jackpot currently at $627,000 and climbing. Tonight's early bird prizes, two lower bowl tickets to see the Oilers and the Sharks on April the 15th. And then you've got another hour or so to register for $1,000 cold, hard cash. Bob stopped drooling. Face off. Left we side of we Samsonov. Can't, we can't win, Jack. <laughs> oh, that's right. I keep forgetting. McDavid stripped by McMahon, who has the Toronto goal. Now he'll lug it back in. Drop it off for Leon Drysuttle. Tried to power to the middle. Instead, spun it back to Bouchard. Matias Ekholm gives it up. Drysuttle right circle. He'll spin on McMahon, then leave it for McDavid coming out of the corner. Evan Bouchard, high slot drive, and a blocker save made by Samsonov. Rebound, sharp angle. Ekholm was stopped. Trickles behind the net. Drysuttle's got it. He'll scoot it back to Bouchard on the right half boards. He spins on Nylander, lays it off McDavid. One-timer, Ekholm missed the net. Rebound, it's Leon Drysuttle. Hovering in the high slot, under pressure, sent it off the corner boards. McCabe got there in front of Zach Hyman, directed one to Morgan Riley, and up to Nylander, who tosses it smartly off the boards and out. A dozen minutes to play in the first period. The Oilers have outshot the lead 6-2, to two, but... Bobby McMahon off a simple dump in, the recipient of a beautiful feed from John Tavares, who is heated up after a mediocre season, especially by his standards. Here's a lead pass by Edmondson after an Oiler dump in. Whistled down deep by Lilgren. Joel Edmondson, all of a sudden a well-traveled defenseman who, of course, won a Stanley Cup at St. Louis. Quick shot, Domi redirected a second time and a save made by Skinner through traffic against Matthew Nyes. That was a good save on the rebound. Oilers banging in deep. Carrick let it go through to CC. Ends up in the corner with Lilgren. Domi directs up to Nyes, who had to slither down low. Did not make a strong play on the puck. Carrick continues to work, and now finally, Austin Matthews comes out of the fray with puck possession for the Toronto Maple Leafs. 39 20 and 9 coming in. Edmonton 42 21 and 4. Both teams seemingly entrenched 
in their current spots. Toronto third in the Atlantic, Edmonton second in the Pacific. The Oilers are eight points back. They do have three in hand on Vancouver. So Edmonton has the better odds of improving its position potentially. Here's a heavy forecheck by Evander Kane that nearly created a turnover, but it was cleared by Benoit, and now Ryan Reeves on the attack. Now in his 14th year, playing for a six different team. Perry makes a play off the wall, briefly held in by Holmberg, who eventually spun and gave it up for Nick Robertson, and his shot deflected up and out of play with 10.26 to go in the first period. The Oilers 5-1-1 in their last seven on the road. Toronto, I mentioned this during the pregame show, Bob, and it should be noted, this year's Leafs have shown resilience when some of their top players have gone down. Morgan Riley, to name one, when he was injured, that actually kick-started yeah. an eight-game winning streak, and they're 13-4-1 in their last 18. Now, that's still not good, as good as Edmonton, but it's right up there. Yeah, they're playing pretty well, and Brad Trey Living's built a bigger, tougher, I think more competitive playoff-type team. We'll see if it pays ultimately come crunch time. Noah Gregor, who got high-sticked in the face by Tom Wilson the other night in Toronto's 7-3 win over Washington. Wilson got a six-game suspension for it that may cost his team a playoff spot. Lilgren tries to hold the zone, a heavy hit on Ryan McLeod, thrown by Noah Gregor to the net with a sharp angle shot to save made by Stuart Skinner. Gregor's last goal came in December. He'll deliver a pass to Edmondson, and that cross-icer was broken up by McLeod, forced back through the neutral zone, and Toronto lifts back into the Edmonton end, where it's slashed free by DeArnay. Kane nearly gave it away at center, grabbed by Nugent Hopkins, and now Evander Kane, looking to get off the schneid without a goal in his last 15. Nugent Hopkins has just one goal in 17. Kane. Cross ice, partially tipped by McMahon. Shot at Colm, dropped at the feet of Samsonov. Corey Perry working hard for the rebound. And then a dangerous pass that Jake McCabe gets away with as Gregor was there, dropping it for Morgan Riley. And now over the line comes McMahon with a shot that nearly fooled Stuart Skinner, but he was protecting that short side and he's able to squeeze it for his fifth save of the night. Nine and a quarter to play in the first period. Bobby McMahon, the only goal of the hockey game, live from Scotiabank Arena. From our Legacy Heating and Cooling broadcast booth, Jack and Bob alongside with you on a Saturday night in Toronto. One nothing for the Leafs, and this is Four Dealers NHL Hockey. The Oilers Radio Network. Staying at the JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District offers prime access to Rogers Place and the Ice District without needing to go outside. Offering welcoming modern luxury, the JW offers an elevated experience unrivaled in Alberta. Visit JWMarriottEdmonton.com to book today. This International Women's Day, Wind House is rallying the community to light the darkness. Throughout March, visit Kingsway Mall and view their 12-foot-tall interactive display, showcasing the real stories of individuals who have found refuge within Wind House shelters. This immersive experience encourages everyone to take part in Wind House's mission, cultivating a community where each donation not only brightens a room, but also helps to illuminate hope for those impacted by violence. Visit windhouse.org slash International Women's Day for more information. McDavid trying to come in with speed. Here he comes. McDavid shoots. Top shelf. He scores. Hey, Edmonton. Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Edmonton Oilers. Honor McDavid. Fantastic. Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Staying at the JW Marriott Edmonton Ice District offers prime access to Rogers Place and the Ice District without needing to go outside. Offering welcoming modern luxury, the JW offers an elevated experience unrivaled in Alberta. Visit JWMarriottEdmonton.com to book today. All games, all seasons. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. 1-0 Toronto. 10.45 complete and a face-off to Stuart Skinner's right-hand side. Front end of a back-to-back -back for both clubs. Toronto will be in Raleigh, North Carolina to take on the Canes tomorrow while Edmonton heads to the nation's capital for a date with the Ottawa Senators whom, like Toronto, they beat in January. Oilers beat the Leafs 4-2. That was January the 16th. And now a dish 
from Nylander to DeForest, but that looked offside and a late call coming from Devin Berg whistled down. What do you make of the first 11 minutes tonight with the Leafs leading 1-0? Well, the Oilers with one blown defensive zone coverage that led to the goal. They've been physical with McDavid. McCabe has gotten a shot in on McDavid, and so too has Joel Edmondson. You know, you're allowed to hit their star players back too. Uh, the McDavid dry subtle Hyman line, not surprisingly, is absolutely unequivocally tilted the ice when they've been out there. Dry subtle off the draw finds Evan Bouchard. He'll rush the puck into the zone from the right hand side. Centering pass deflected, lands at Hyman's feet. Hyman's career high in Toronto was 21 goals. He's gone 27, 36, and this year 48 in his first three years in Edmonton. Nylander to the middle of the ice. Morgan Riley back door. Nylander was there and tried to drag it backhand, and Skinner made the save. If he just redirects it home, Bob, it's 2 nothing. Edmonton lucky. He was on his forehand, and for whatever reason, he inexplicably passed up just a simple kind of spoonish redirect. Bouchard will knock it down. I think he anticipated so, that Skinner would push off to his left. I'm not yeah. quite sure how he didn't score. No. Here's CeCe. Batted down. Edmondson gives way. Matthew Nyes got it over the stick of Nugent Hopkins, then poked free by McLeod. What Austin is... Matthews trying to hunt down that puck against Brett Kulak. Max Domi was relieved of it. Domi historically has had good success against Edmonton with 12 goals in 22 games, including the first hat trick of his NHL career back when he was with Arizona. He's been a bit of a suitcase as well. This is his seventh team in nine years. Edmonton guilty of an icing call up the right hand side. Well, Toronto's a real good face off team, Jack, as you know, and Austin Matthews is out there to take the strides at 54%. Hey, Edmonton's pretty good too. Leafs are uh, second in the league in face offs. The Oilers have moved up to fifth. Oilers just a shade under 53% and off the draw. Good work by Fogel, and he's able to shield Benoit from the puck, forcing Toronto back to neutral. Now Domi charges down the middle, but coughed it up. Fogel did not get it out. Benoit shot from the point, weakly by Connor Timmins, who's been plagued by concussion issues throughout his career. Up the right-hand side, Benoit stepped up on Fogel. In fact, Connor Timmins in the last seven years has not played more than 42 games in one season, no matter where he's been, whether it's been junior, the minors, or the NHL. In for the right-hand side, Holmberg overskated. Brett Kulak takes over for Edmonton, and it's Cody Ceci angling one up to Matthias Janmark at center. Stifled there, four players come together for the puck, including Sam Carrick, who's able to nudge it into the Toronto zone, but there's Lilgren to clear for the Leafs. Skipped over the stick of Ryan Reeves and collected by Vinny DeArnais. He'll wing it around the boards, held in by Edmondson, a rugged player who many thought Edmondson might have his eyes on at the deadline. Nick Robertson with a puck for Toronto. Smashed into by DeArnais. The puck rolls free, and Carrick able to lift off the plexi and back through center. Edmondson back to retrieve for Toronto. A big hit by Connor Brown, who of course played for the Leafs. Well known to his old teammates. Lead pass on the move is Noah Gregor. Trying to get around Vinny DeArnais. Playing against his hometown club. Gregor forces it down low. Kicks it out to the point. McCabe a shot that did not make its way through. Blocked and cleared by DeArnais. On the move and an offside. Evander Kane. Right wing off a feed from Adam Henrique and a bit of a missed opportunity there. 6.03 to go in the first period. That's a subtle play, Bob, but it's a bit of an unforced error, is it not? 100%. Henrique was moving up the ice, too. Evander has to find a way to skirt the line there. 6.03 to go, first period. Toronto leads 1 0. 17 in a row undefeated for Nashville. Out of town. It's score. unbelievable. Pizza what, 17. 15 0 2, right? Yeah, and they uh, get the 1 0 victory tonight at home over Detroit. There's another guy. Did you hit the like button? Has to Come on, hit the like button. The top three. Subscribe too. For Join the family. I, you and I thought they might be dead in the water two months ago. Cleared up the right hand side. And he was the guy, remember, who triggered this latest Florida run, got them a President's and where, Trophy. And where was he last year? New Jersey. New Jersey, and they had a 50-win season. Out of the playoffs this year. Matias Ekholm up the right-hand side. Tavares 
looking for Bobby McMahon and you know firing Lindy Ruff I mean in retrospect boy the Devils would like a do over there here's Evan Bouchard in over the line waiting pulling up Kane was in the vicinity and Bouchard held onto it too long and trying to force it free was John Tavares and I think he might have drawn a penalty who's this on here I actually thought Tavares he's going to get the call I think this is a break for Edmonton well it was a break because Bouchard didn't make the easy play I, I think that's a holding call that's going to go against Tavares, but I think you could have easily called that. There's a little paw. Well, the second one. Uh, yeah. He, it's a reach. It's a front. reach. Yeah. yeah. It's a reach. Upon further review, he did stick the arm out a little bit more than I thought originally. And Tavares is saying, hey, the guy put himself in trouble. You can't reward him. But the second look at the replay did get that arm extended. So the Oilers will be on an ATCO power play, looking to tie it up on the other side of this break. one nothing Leafs from Scotiabank Arena. The Oilers Radio Network. NHL action is heating up with an ultra-cool game day experience at the Canadian Ice House. Pre-game with us for great food and drink with an amazing wall of sight and sound. Hands down the most TVs to catch all the hits, the goals, and the game day glory. Enjoy a dollar off tankards of Coors Light and Molson Canadian. Every Oilers game day where NHL hockey lives at the Canadian Ice House. When the Oilers are on the ice, the big hits are a part of the game. But they shouldn't be a part of your drive. If you've been injured in a car collision, let James H. Brown and Associates and their over 200 years of combined injury law experience help you. Locally owned and proud Edmonton Oilers fans, James H. Brown and Associates is ready to support you with their unrivaled experience, unrivaled results, and unrivaled commitment. When accidents happen, head to jameshbrown.com. Today, when it comes to following sports, a basic box score just won't cut it. Get the stats behind the stats with NHL Edge. So you won't just see McCarr's time on ice. You'll see where he spent it. You won't just know Matthew scored. You'll know how hard he shot it. And you won't just get OV's shot total. You'll know where he shot it from. Even if they're all from the same place. Know more about every stat, every shift, and every star with NHL Edge. You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. Atco power play, dry sidle the face off to Samsonov's right hand side and off the draw. McDavid and Hyman swarm the circle and are able to maintain it deep in the corner. You've got five players, an absolute dog pile as Edmonton looks for the tying goal. Bobby McMahon has the game's only goal at this point. It came four minutes in after a failed Edmonton power play. Finally carved out of the corner for Bouchard. Nugent Hopkins moves it swiftly for McDavid. Back to Nugent Hopkins across for Drysum. Second in the league with 18 power play goals. Little spin in the corner, double team. Camp with pressure, had a chance to get it out, did not. Bouchard to McDavid, curled it back to Bouchard. Now McDavid loads up, feathers it across, and a one-timer stopped. Good work. Edmondson in the shot lane, and a length of the ice clear by Connor Dewar. You work that hard, you don't get the puck to the net. Got to get the puck to the net earlier. Bouchard. I agree with you. McDavid and Hyman working hard to wrestle that puck free. Off the draw, now Nugent Hopkins back out of the zone for Evan Bouchard. Across to Dry Subtle, top of the right circle. Thought shot, gave it, got it back from McDavid, then a backhander forced wide. Rebound, Zach Hyman. Pressure from Lilgren. He was tripped up. Crowd wanted a call, none forthcoming, and it's launched down the ice. Skinner will knock it down. Too much focus on getting it to Hyman here in the power play. Changing out the top unit here with 40 seconds to go in the man advantage. And that's why I thought, Bob, you know, Reed asked me about it during the pregame show. I don't like all this focus. I mean, he's still two away from yeah. 50. I mean, it's not easy to get two in the NHL. Big hit. Benoit flattened Kane. I think he wanted interference. None was forthcoming. And the Leafs are able to rocket one down the ice. They're giving it to Kane as he skates by the Leafs bench. Ten seconds to go in the man advantage. Here's Nurse gaining the line, chipping and charging in against Morgan Riley. Around the boards, Kane, a sharp angle shot that was blocked. Kept alive by Nurse. Kane looking for Perry back door, and he missed him. Now Tavares up the middle, and that's going to be a penalty. Nurse hit Nylander, then slammed it up the boards. He better be careful. Well, he's... 
He's having a rough game here. So Nurse is going to the box. Did he get a second two for the unsportsmanlike? I don't think he did, but Nurse is unhappy. He felt the puck was in the vicinity, and he might have an argument. They're going to call it interference. Bob, that was close. It was a bang-bang play, and Edmonton's thinking, hey, you let one go, Vander Kane the other oh, boy that is tight that's tight well now it's a huge kill yeah it's well a Toronto huge... with its first power play of the night now the Leafs are a good power play team but they've struggled without Mitch Marner they're two for 20 without Marner and they've given up nine shorthanded goals this year Tavares off the faceoff, able to pull it free. Back to Lilgren, moves high slot, gives it up Max Domi. Now to the net, Nylander curled one wide. Rebound, Matthews couldn't hold on. Lilgren kept it in, whistled one wide. Domi off the boards, will work it down low. Nap auto parts, penalty kill for the Edmonton Oilers. Left side, Domi skips it across. One-timer, Lilgren redirected right into the pads of Stuart Skinner, and he'll fall on it. See, there's it began with Kulak, CeCe, Nugent Hopkins, and Carrick. And now let's see if Edmonton shuffles the deck. They're shooting. They're getting a chance, and they're putting it to the net. And the Oilers got to make eight passes. And it, it, it's on the road. They're more deliberate. They're more to the point at home. And they're, what it is a strange discrepancy. Well, what it's happens? 17%. It's basically they're half as effective. I mean, that's a big, that's a big fall yep, And we know why. We know why. Every team gets jacked up to play Edmonton. It's, they, you kill a penalty against the Oilers, given how good that power play was last year, it's a win. And that's what's happening a lot on the road this year. Will Grant off the draw. The Oilers were able to rifle it down. They are in and Ekholm now out there with Brown and Yanmark. And Brown clogs up the neutral zone against William Nylander. Matthews building speed. He leads Toronto with 15 power play goals this season. Tavares just missed Nylander. Deflected off a skate. Max Domi tracks it down. Austin Matthews. A lot of people concerned about this Toronto special teams. Power play and penalty kill. Here's Domi. Rifles one and that pinballed off a Skinner to the corner. Fired it across. Matthews kept it alive for Lilgren. A shot redirected home. Nylander. A beautiful tip. Two Nothing Toronto, not much Skinner can do. William Nylander has a goal in five consecutive games. Give him 39 for the season, and it's Toronto by a deuce. Well, I guess they're not concerned anymore, Jack. I mean, it's you get one, and, and this right now it started with the Oilers' first power play early in the game, and they they generated looks, but I'd say not enough quality opportunities. Toronto had a much more simplistic approach. Get pucks in it, get some deflections. Lilligran on this first unit, and Nylander with a real nice deflection, and the Oilers are chasing again against Toronto. Now they came back at home from 2-0 down. They got some work to do tonight, and unfortunately, a couple of their better players haven't been very good here in the first period. Nylander the tip, Lilligran the initial shot. And Toronto's up 2-0. As Bob mentioned, 31 minutes into the game in Edmonton, the Oilers trailed 2-0. In this one, we're only 18 and a half in. Off the draw, belted wide by Camp. A backhander by Gregor kicked out into the slot by Skinner. And we've got another tripping call coming against Edmonton. This is just a clear by the Oilers through center with a minute 27 to go in the first period. You've got a penalty coming, and I think it's Evander Kane. Yep. Just stuck his stick out. Well, now you have to. You cannot be down 3 nothing after one. Can't. So Kane to the box, and Toronto right back on the power play. Timmins, no question. I mean, I mean what's he going to do there? What's he? His back is to the play as a defenseman. And so you're saying, why stick your stick out there? Yes. You don't need to do it. So, 2 nothing, and Toronto back on the power play where Nylander just tipped one home from Timothy Lilgren. Off the draw, won by Toronto. Max Domi left circle, and that rocketed out of play. Carrick's got to win a draw here. It's dropped two straight. And he's been 60% as an oiler in the face-off circle. He's back in there now. Quick conference with Nugent Hopkins. 
Nurse and Gayarnay, the other Napa Auto Parts penalty killers. Tavares digs in against Carrick, wins another faceoff. Lilgren, top of the left circle, threw it across. Matthews to Tavares, top of the right circle. His pass deflected away by Darnell Nurse. And now here comes Sam Carrick. Poke checked off the stick momentarily. Sin in deep. And Samsonov will leave it for Lilgren with a minute to go in this first period in Toronto. Up by a pair. William Nylander who tipped home the second goal. Gathering himself through neutral. Forced off the puck by Eckholm in the corner. Nugent Hopkins bouncing puck. Good job by Lilgren to hold the zone. Tavares shoots off the pads of Skinner. Rebound Neeland on his backhand. Pulls it back to his forehand, but when he tried to center, a good play by Yanmark, who was belted by Tavares, but he slammed it length of the ice. Half minute to go in the period. Shots are 10-6 Toronto. Each team has had two power plays. Toronto has scored on its first. Bobby McMahon unable to handle the outlet for Morgan Riley. And it looks like the Leafs will have to settle for a two-goal lead here. We're down to 12 seconds as Riley brings it in from center. Skinner out to handle it. Coughed it up. Nice to the middle of the ice. Timmons over one-timer. And that was slammed wide by Morgan Riley. Nyes with a centering pass that's intercepted by Fogel at the horn. And the Oilers will head to the dressing room down two. And they'll be shorthanded for the first 33 seconds of the second period with Evander Kane riding Pine in the box. 2-0 Toronto. And Bob, you know, I didn't feel like Edmonton was totally ineffective on its power play, but the combination of the Oilers failing to convert and then Toronto immediately scoring an even strength seemed to give the Leafs a bit of a lift. 100%, Jack, and let's cut to the uh, chase here. Darnell Nurse makes the wrong read on the first goal against. The Oilers are playing zone defense. The puck goes back into the, uh, into the left corner. Darnell Nurse is a left defenseman. Vincent Deharnay is a right D. He chases into the left side. Darnell's got to go back to the front of the net. And instead, I'm not sure what he was doing, but they both ended up, in the, and Darnell was up high. like, and, and that gives an easy look for McMahon on the first goal. Then Nurse sends a pass down the left side, a suicide pass that gets Evander Kane blown up. Then Darnell jumps in, gets involved in the offense. Then he gets called 50-50 play. Bit of a tough call against Nurse. They score on the power play. Then Kane with a, a reach infraction. It's a penalty all day on a player that wasn't in a position to do anything right at the blue line. Like you're not, you're worried about Morgan Riley there, maybe Lilligren. Come on, with all due respect, you're not worrying about Connor Timmins at the at the center point position. The Oilers have been the author of their own demise here, and they got serious work to do. They got to play better. It's hard to be underrated in Toronto, but is Lilgren one of those no, emerging players that people aren't paying enough attention to? Just the fact that they chose him over Sandine told you everything, right? That they, I mean, who would know who would know better than Toronto about their own players? So I mean, he's, he's plus forty-seven in parts of three seasons, yeah. and he's up to 23 points on the year. I mean, again, he's Morgan Riley deserves a lot of sure. credit for the career he's had, but Lilgren to me Well, you saw what Nylander said about him this morning and the availability that he did. He just, he talked about the fact that he does some unique things, and we saw it. Well, here, here's, to me, here's the difference in the game. Toronto has played a direct game. And the Oilers are screwing around with guys throwing behind the back. Are they pass. thinking about Hyman's 50? Way too much. Just go play. McLeod and Fogel got to get moving their feet, and they got to dig in on wall battles. Okay? They got to get going here, and they got to survive the first 40 seconds of the second period here, Edmonton. Bob, Chris Knobloch during the course, and I'm going to go back to even the last game, was a perfect example against Buffalo. Made the switch, loaded up top line in the third uh, period. Did you go the other way? Well, I, I wanted to ask you because you felt like the top line was effective early, and then I thought it dropped off a little bit, and then the Oilers got in some penalty trouble. So I'm, I'm, when do you think he considers a switch? I think he has to consider it start of the second period. I, I, I would do it right away because I think that if you get dry saddle against Tavares, and put Nugent Hopkins up with McDavid and Hyman. Nugent Hopkins, McDavid and Hyman, 5v5, have got the best expected goals for of any line in the league. They're, they're quite successful on their own. And just go play. But play in straight, direct routes. And I think that the Oilers have got some... I, and I, I worry about this coming back with 11 kids from Southern Ontario here. You don't have to put on a show. Play. 
play a road game, and they didn't play a road game, and you're playing against a team. Toronto is playing that direct game. Toronto's, they've heard about the Oilers having the best record in the league for four months. Go play. So down by two after one, they, this is a good team. And you don't want to get into a track meet with them. But that said, starts with a kill to start well, the Well, and you pointed out Toronto playing a direct game. And, again, it shows how they've learned to win without some of their top yeah. guys this year, notably Riley and tonight Mitch Marner. The Leafs, too. The Oilers no score. McMahon and Nylander with the goals. Coming up, we'll have Reed Wilkins and Rob Brown with their thoughts on the opening 20, which is now complete. Toronto, two. Edmonton, no score. This is four dealers, NHL hockey. The Oilers Radio Network. When you play the largest 50-50 in sports, everybody wins. Your support makes all of oil country a better place. A place of kindness, caring, and compassion. Uplifting those in need, changing lives forever. The largest 50-50 pot in professional sports is currently growing by the second. Get your tickets now at EdmontonOilers.com and help change lives today. Maybe even your own. AGLC license number 645766. C-H-E-D Edmonton. Your home for everything Oilers. Oilers Now is on the air weekdays at 5 p.m. on 6.30 Chat, the official radio home of Oilers Hockey. A chorus entertainment radio station. It's our YEG with 6.30 Chad. Make your next home project dazzle with the Edmonton Home and Garden Show. Check out their vibrant marketplace. Connect with industry experts and so much more. March 21st through the 24th at the Expo Center. Then enjoy a fun-filled weekend of hockey all-stars and enthusiasts as the Alzheimer's Face-Off Pro-Am Hockey Tournament returns April 26th to the 28th. Full details and online donations at alzheimersfaceoff.ca. For details on these and more events, visit 630 Chad. Com. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Domi off the boards. We'll work it down low. Nap Auto Parts penalty kill for the Edmonton Oilers. Left side, Domi skips it across. One timer. Lilgren redirected right to the pads of Stuart Skinner, and he'll fall on it. All right, that's our look into the highlight zone for Century Casinos. All in, all games, all season. Century Casinos, three great locations, Edmonton, St. Albert, and next to the Edmonton International Airport. Welcome to the winner's zone. It is 2-0 Maple Leafs leading the Oilers after the first period. Along with Rob Brown, I'm Reed Wilkins at the intermission for end of the row flooring centers. Let's get flooring. Rob, early power play for the Oilers, less than a, a minute into the game. They go on the man advantage, not able to cash in, uh, and, and really... Uh, I, I thought the Leafs were were just the better team in, in that period. Maybe not by a, a wide margin, but I thought they're fully deserving of their lead. I agree. It's always tough when you get a power play to start a game, like in the first minute or so or first couple of minutes, because you're really not into it. Your hands aren't into it. The focus isn't quite there. And all of a sudden you're out on a power play trying to make skilled plays. And the one thing that I've seen in the first Power, a couple of power plays that the Oilers have had, the Leafs are very aggressive. Most teams that play against the Oilers back off and just try to block all the shots and try to block the passes. I think that actually surprised the Oilers a couple of times. Edmondson took a healthy run at Connor McDavid on the very first power play that I think surprised McDavid. So I agree. The Oilers had some good chances. They had some good looks in the first five, six minutes, two of them by Ekholm, one of them by Hyman. But after that, it, it was the, the Maple Leafs that were the better team. And I think the Oilers went without a shot for a long, long period there as the, or as the, the period went on. So uh, a couple of mistakes defensively. And when you do that against the Toronto Maple Leafs, they're going to make you pay. Well, something went wrong there on the Leafs' first goal. Just watching the video again, I mean, Bobby McMahon is all alone in front. I mean, you probably played entire seasons where you weren't <laughs> that alone in well, front of the net. Uh, well, just, actually, uh, yeah. when I played Reed, there was a lot of really slow players, well, so we seemed enough. to get open more often. But <laughs> it, it was one where uh, Nurse takes the guy at the blue line and then doesn't take a direct route back to the front of the net and comes without speed. Dayarnay takes his man on the boards, and then again, he leaves his man and doesn't go back towards the net. He goes back behind the net. And then I think it was Carrick, he left the front of the net to go behind the net. Everyone forgot who the most dangerous player was. It, sometimes you you get too aggressive and you think, okay, that guy's got the puck, no one's on him, I gotta get to him. But if Carrick at that point, his two defensemen were in the wrong spot. 
So if Carrick at that point said, okay, I've got a two-on-one, but the, the most of the dangerous guy standing here in front with me, I'll let that guy stand behind the net. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make time. I'm going to try and hold this two-on-one off long enough until I get some help. And instead, he became aggressive, went behind the net, and a nice pass. And as all of a sudden, there's a leaf wide open in front of the net. And that wasn't the only time. The Nylander, who scored the second goal, there was another miscommunication. He had a wide open net. And he's going to be thinking about this one tonight. He just had to push it into the open net. And I think he just was shocked that it was that open. So it was 2 nothing for the Leafs. It should have been 3 nothing for the Leafs. That was not a great period for the Edmonton Oilers. All right, so Toronto 2 nothing. They still have 33 seconds left on a power play that'll bleed over into the second period here. Remember to check out that Oilers 50-50 jackpot. It is in support of every kid deserves a shot, a lasting symbol of hope, inclusivity, and empowerment, ensuring every child in oil country has the opportunity to thrive. The jackpot $633,000 already, and it's going to grow for another week. We have early bird draws tonight. Two lower bowl tickets to see the Oilers against the Sharks on April 15th. And then at 7 o'clock, a draw for $1,000 cash. Go to the Oilers website and hit that 50-50 link. We'll check your out-of-town scoreboard when we get back. You're listening to Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. Edmonton Oilers fans, visit Ice District Authentics locations at Rogers Place and receive a free level wear hat with a minimum spend of $100 on any level wear product. Shop men's, women's, and youth apparel and headwear to take advantage of this amazing offer while quantities last. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. Did you know the RCMP polices over 99% of Alberta's landscape? From the oil sands to the Rockies to the prairies, the RCMP has a province covered. Providing policing services to more than 1,700 communities and with over 150 career specializations, the Alberta RCMP has something to fit everyone's goals and lifestyles. Visit rcmpcareers.ca and take the next step towards your career with the Alberta RCMP. A message from the Government of Canada. Edmonton Oilers fans, visit Ice District Authentics locations at Rogers Place and receive a free level wear hat with a minimum spend of $100 on any level wear product. Shop men's, women's, and youth apparel and headwear to take advantage of this amazing offer while quantities last. With Global News, I'm Thomas Dias. The state funeral for Canada's 18th Prime Minister, Brian Mulroney, took place on a snowy day in Montreal. The guest list included Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Canadian actor Ryan Reynolds, and hockey legend Wayne Gretzky, who recalled one of his memorable encounters with Mulroney. He goes, young man, remember 1993? That was a great victory for the Montreal Canadiens, right? And I said, sir, I was on the other team. <laughs> That wasn't so great for me. He goes, no, no, but it was wonderful for the country. I go, okay, great. Good for you. Mulroney passed away on February 29th at the age of 84 and was remembered today as a larger-than-life figure who transcended politics. And Russian President Vladimir Putin addressed the nation today, saying authorities have arrested four men suspected of carrying out Friday's attack on a suburban Moscow concert hall that killed at least 133 people. Putin added that the four are among 11 people who have been detained. The Islamic State's Afghanistan affiliate is claiming responsibility, but Putin is accusing Ukraine of being involved, which it strongly denies. News on demand at 630chad.com. Score big with the unmatched purity of Clearwater Vodka, the perfect companion for Oilers fans. Crafted with the pristine waters of Alberta, it's a sip of local excellence. Clearwater Vodka, where the spirit of the game meets true Alberta quality. Must be 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. 
Look, I know this is radio, so it's hard to show you how much is on sale during the Big One Clearance event at End of the Row Flooring Centers, but it's a lot. Like this flooring, or this one, and all these. Yep, all at clearance pricing for a limited time. Now, you don't need to just imagine what it would look like, though. You can use our visualizer at endoftheroll.com to upload a picture of your room to see the flooring in your actual home. Try it. Find something you love, then get a great deal on it. At the Big One Clearance event, on now at End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. From your home to the ice rink, Atco Energy is there. As the official energy provider of Rogers Place, we're also proud partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Atco Energy, powering your place. Customers are free to purchase natural gas services or electricity services from a retailer of their choice. For a list of retailers, visit ucahelps.alberta.ca or call 310-4822. Score big with the unmatched purity of Clearwater Vodka, the perfect companion for Oilers fans. Crafted with the pristine waters of Alberta, it's a sip of local excellence. Clearwater Vodka, where the spirit of the game meets true Alberta quality. Must be 18 plus. Please drink responsibly. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. All right, 2 nothing for the Leafs over the Oilers. Shots 10-6 for Toronto. So Ilya Samsonov stopping all the pucks he faced in that period. I was talking to Gord Stellick from the NHL Morning Skate on Sirius XM. I asked him who should be the Leafs goalie in the playoffs. Well, to answer your question, it should be Joe Wall. It should be Joe Wall. But I had I had no problem or have no problem with Ilya Sam- Samsonov. Ilya Samsonov, I give him the, a lot of credit and I give the organization a lot of credit that it wasn't happening for him. And I guess in, in Edmonton now, you know, Jack Campbell, it's starting to come around, albeit in the American Hockey League, about happening for him again. It's a, it's a funny position. Uh, there's not a lot of Connor Hellebuck's in the league or, or, or Vasilevsky's in the league, you know, that kind. So uh, you want, and same in Edmonton's case, like somebody that's going to provide you a chance, what Vegas had last year, what Colorado had the year before good enough goaltending to provide you a chance to win every game. That's what you want as a minimum. If they can steal the odd game, well, that would be dynamite. So I would lean towards Joe Wall over Samsonov. Um, none of them give me the yippee ki uh, And most teams don't have that either. You yeah. know, that that kind of luster of Marty Brodeur or Patrick Waugh or, or, you know, on and on and on, Henrik Lundqvist. But that's the guy I'd start game one. All right, a little bit there from Gord Stellick as we check the scoreboard for Pizza 73, official pizza of the Edmonton Oilers, who will play in Ottawa tomorrow at 4 Mountain. The Senators lead the Devils 1-0 at the start of the second period. Matthew Joseph has his 11th. The Predators, they do it again. 1-0 win over the Red Wings. Philip Forsberg, the only goal of the game. He now has 39 on the season. The Blues beat the Wild 5-4 in overtime. Brandon Saad got the game winner, his 22nd of the season. Flyers knock off Boston 3-2, and the Islanders double up the Jets 6-3. All right, the Oilers got to kill off 33 seconds of a Leafs power play and then try to get it going. They're down 2-0 going to the second period. Jack and Bob coming up. Ford Dealers NHL Hockey on the Oilers Radio Network. At the intermission has been brought to you by End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite pho shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. Athletes know that to advance your career, you've got to be part of a winning team. So, what about you? Are you working for a winning team? Well, here's your chance to do just that. Brandt is a strong and stable industry leader with career opportunities across Canada. We have hundreds of positions available right now from parts, sales, positioning technology, heavy-duty mechanics, and more. Be a part of a winning team. Earn your stripes by joining Brandt today. Find out more at BrantJobs.com. 
you know that there are nine Napa Auto Parts stores serving the greater Edmonton area and have been doing so for more than 50 years? Since Napa first opened at Edmonton, the community has grown and vehicles have changed, but you can always trust Napa Auto Parts to provide you with the expert know-how and the best vehicle parts. And if that isn't enough, every time you visit a Napa Auto Parts store when you present your AMA card, you receive an additional 10% discount on all retail parts and accessories. Visit your local Napa Auto Parts store for more offers and expert know-how. Napa Auto Parts is a proud fan of the Edmonton Oilers. Listen on air, on air online, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. The Edmonton Oilers will begin the second period, killing a penalty. 33 seconds left in the minor to Evander Kane. He'll take a seat in the box as Nugent Hopkins, Henrique, Nurse, and DeArnay attempt to kill this off. Toronto 2, Edmonton no score. Shots were 10 6 in the first period. McMahon is 12th, and Nylander is 39th for Toronto. Alongside Bob Stoffer, I'm Jack Michaels from high atop Scotiabank Arena in Toronto. Our legacy heating and cooling broadcast booth. Front end of a back to back for Edmonton, who looks for its first season sweep of Toronto in 35 years. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Oilers have only beaten Toronto twice in a non-COVID campaign once in those 35 years. They won two out of three back in the 2002-03 season. Here's a hard shot off the draw taken by Matthews streaking in left side. Caught Skinner in the mask. Two on two, Edmonton shorthanded the other way. Henrique saw it deflected wide by Nurse and the Toronto captain John Tavares works his way in left to right. Feeds Matthews, who's been quiet tonight. And here turns it over. Scooped down the ice by Nugent Hopkins. Evander Kane out of the box, and Edmonton able to kill off that half minute of Toronto power play time relatively easily. Nylander flips it in for the Leafs. Bouchard up to Eckholm. Now coming off a successful kill, you've got Dry Subtle McDavid and Hyman out there, but first a chance and a save made on Connor Dewar by Stuart Skinner. And Dewar's got 10 goals this year. He can put it in the net. Well, I think Leon Dreisaitl's very happy out there. He took a cross check from Edmondson, just gave the stick right back to him. McCabe then hit by Dreisaitl. Coming away with the puck, however, is Noah Gregor for Toronto. He'll attack right wing. Wrist shot, and that was swallowed up by Matthias Ekholm rather routinely. Ekholm came in to tonight, fourth in the league and plus minus at plus 34. And seven points in his last four games. Here's Eckholm looking up butts. Fires one, right side, missed Kane, won't be called for icing. And sent up the boards by Connor Timmons, but not out. Enrique down low to Evander Kane. Still stuck on 21 goals, throws it into the middle of the ice, and then Tavares, a turnover in front, Kane unable to finish. Didn't get much on it. It was sitting there between the hash marks, and he only caught it partially, Bob, and it floated right into the waiting grasp of Ilya Samsonov. A dreadful turnover by Tavares, and Perry put it right out in front for Kane. He did in a late stick there. Yeah, I think there Timmons. was a bit of a stick. But again, Everton has had some chances. They just haven't been sharp around the net. And man, Matthews got to pick the puck up on a one-timer and a solid save from Stuart Skinner towards the end of that uh, power play for Toronto. Tavares got away with one there. Adam Henrique preparing to take the draw. He's going to be chased out of there. Why? Replaced doesn't even let him get it that, that's by Evander Kane against Pontus Holmberg. And Kane is able to win the faceoff, muscle it toward the net, but that was guided to the corner and golfed out of the zone by Ryan Reeves. Maybe a late developing two on one here. Wrist shot Edmondson, and that's speared by Stuart Skinner. And this has been Skinner's strengths all year long. Bob, you talked about, well, you can't afford to fall behind 3-0. Yeah. Skinner hasn't done it at all in the last 15 Demon, games. And we he this. gives up too early, and then he seems to shut the door. Well, this is a different type of team, though. This team can score. They're right up there at the Oilers in terms of goals for Jack. You're not, like, Buffalo's got good young talent, but they're not scoring like they did last year. The Leafs are still scoring, and that's what makes them dangerous. Face off to Skinner's right. 
Matthews out there to take the draw for Toronto against Sam Carrick. And there's a clutch faceoff win for Carrick. And Darnell Nurse will quarterback the puck up through center. And across the Toronto line, shoots it and pursues along with Carrick in the right-hand corner. Matthews won the battle. And the Leafs look to break out. Connor Timmons to the middle of the ice. Nyes. Matthews loads and could not pull the trigger against Vinny Dayarnay. And the Oilers on the counterattack with Carrick, Yanmark, and Nurse joining the rush. Here's Yanmark to the middle, shooting, and that was deflected. A desperate dive by Benoit might have ushered that one high. Now Nyes with a steal on Connor Brown. He stayed in the battle, knocked it away from Nyes, and it was eventually flipped toward the net by Carrick. Timmons back in his own zone. Again, it's not played a lot of hockey the last seven years. Shot in by Nyes from center and retrieved by Brett Kulak of Edmonton. Three minutes gone by, second period, and it's 2-0 Toronto. Kulak up the middle. That's spilled on net. And Samsonov with Nugent Hopkins bearing down on him will stick that in his hip pocket. So to this point, Chris Knobloch just... Keep it rolling over the lines, looking to ultimately generate some offense. I mean, think about it. Edmonton outshot Toronto 6-2 in yeah. the first six or seven minutes. They've had two shots in about the last 15 or 16 minutes and, of game action. And they've had the answer against Edmonton's top line since a dominant first shift led to a power play. Winners keep getting waved out of a circle. Leon's asking for an explanation. McDavid now will take the draw against Tavares to the right of Samsonov. And Tavares able to win the faceoff, poked by McCabe over to Morgan Riley. He's engaged with Zach Hyman. Dreisaitl held by Nylander. Those two toppled the ice surface, kicked out to Bouchard right point. Staggers to his right through Nylander, heading for the net, centering pass. And Hyman could not make clean contact with it. Ekholm to Bouchard, cross ice, and a swing and a miss by Dreisaitl. And now Robertson will come over to nudge that puck through the neutral zone. Matias Eckholm up the right-hand side. Dreisaitl was able to stay onside. Morgan Riley battled and backhanded it up to Tavares. Now a steal at center from Nylander. He'll drop it off in turn for Jake McCabe. Flips it cross corner. Eckholm looking to clear. Kept alive by Connor Dewar, a wrist shot, and a save made by Skinner from a sharp angle. David Camp on the rebound. Backhands it in front, a save Skinner. Once more on Dewar. And Toronto able to generate a couple of chances with its third line out there. Four minutes gone by in the second period. And it's still a two-goal lead for the homestanding Leafs. Toronto's got a better record on the road this season. Just 18-12-3 and three at home. Which is a sign the orders have been dominant under Chris Knobloch at home. Terrific. They haven't been too shabby on the road either. 17-8-1 under Knobloch on the road. I guess... When you rip off a 37-9-3 record, Bob, you're not losing too many games no matter where they play. Off the draw, you've got Cody Ceci. Clubbed away from Nugent Hopkins by Max Doman. In fact, Edmonton is better than 100 points in terms of points percentage. Better than 100 against every other club in the league over the last three months. I mean, they're playing at about 780 in terms of points percentage. No one is within 100 points of that. Here's McLeod. One-timer ripped by Kulak and a good save by Samsonov. He had to reach behind him with his left glove and make the save. It's his 10th of the night and some brief jostling in front of the Toronto net. How's that not a penalty to Domi? Just punch Nugent Hopkins right in the face after Nugent Hopkins even tried to hold Domi up, and he still got uh, took a shot. Well, in the words of uh, the immortal Leo DeRocher, some, sometimes it doesn't pay to be a nice guy. Yes. Nugent Hopkins isn't finishing last anytime soon, but he took one to the grill for his trouble there. Adam Henrique against Pontus Holmberg to the left of Samsonov. Off the faceoff, Kane steers out. Vinny Dayarnay looking for a lane. His shot redirected into the corner, and Ryan Reeves, an opportunity to clear, which he does. Holmberg tried to put it in deep. 
could not. And now the Leafs on second effort. Holmberg this time has it swiped by Darnell Nurse. Threw it into heavy traffic. I mean, Darnell's. Henrique had two guys on him. There was nowhere for that puck to go. And Darn. Toronto shoots it back in. It's always the same with Darnell. When he tries to do too much, it backfires on him. Less is more. Dayarnay up the right-hand side. They're going to say no icing there. Connor Timmons able to pick it up for Toronto. Turned it over. Darnell Nurse, sharp angle shot and a save made by Samsonov. Rebound, Ryan Reeves. And he'll lug it up the left-hand side. Couldn't control it on his stick. And Reek pops it back in to the offensive zone for Edmonton. Now it's stapled at the blue line. Five players digging right in front of the Oiler bench. Corey Perry holding his position. And it's guided back to Bouchard by Adam Henrique. Bouchard under control, 67 points this year, up to Ekholm. Now Connor Brown loads and fires, save aim, Samsonov, and then he put it into the middle. Ekholm, what timer Bouchard, and that ended up up over top. Lilgren was wrapped up by Carrick, and you can hear the officials telling him to watch his hands. He got him up high, no holding call just yet, and now a fierce battle for the puck, won by the Oilers' Carrick. Here's Ekholm. Getting it back from Bouchard. Shot, and that was blocked. And now Edmonton gaining some traction here. But as I say that, Eckholm stumbled a little bit, and that allowed Noah Gregor to get it out of the zone and ultimately floated on net. Skinner leads it for Bouchard. Up to Eckholm, and now on the move, Connor Brown. Tried to drag move around Edmondson. That did not pay off. Carrick able to keep it down low along the end boards. Morgan Riley the outlet, and Tavares had it shot back in by Kulak. Edmondson will be whistled for an offside. 13-23 to play in the second period, and the score remains the same as it was after the opening 20. 2 nothing for the Leafs. McMahon and Nylander were the only goals for Toronto. This is four dealers, NHL Hockey. The Oilers Radio Network. This International Women's Day, Wynn House is rallying the community to light the darkness. Throughout March, visit Kingsway Mall and view their 12-foot-tall interactive display, showcasing the real stories of individuals who have found refuge within Wynn House shelters. This immersive experience encourages everyone to take part in Wynn House's mission, cultivating a community where each donation not only brightens a room, but also helps to illuminate hope for those impacted by violence. Visit windhouse.org slash International Women's Day for more information. Experience a game day meal that's second to none. Fanfare with Skip is your all-star lineup of local restaurants this hockey season. Watch Jack Michaels as he goes behind the scenes to give you the play-by-play -play action on each restaurant's connection to the community and our team. Visit edmontonoilers.com slash skip to watch this month's episode with meat. Then open your Skip app and tap in an order with exclusive fan access to game day combos and free delivery. Did somebody say Skip? Proud partner of the Edmonton Oilers. For years now, we've been warning Edmontonians on the hazards of our stormwater facilities. While they may appear to look like still ponds, there is moving water beneath the surface, which makes the ice dangerously... The unpredictability of stormwater facilities makes them treacherously unsafe for all winter activities, even walking. So think twice. Don't go on the ice. A safety message from EPCOR. All games, all, games. All, season. all season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Back live in Toronto where the Toronto Maple Leafs, a 2-0 lead over the Edmonton Oilers as they look to get a split of the season series. A record of 16-4-2 in their last 22 meetings with Edmonton including 4-0-1 in the last five played here at Scotiabank Arena. But Edmonton rallied from 2-0 down to beat Toronto. It was about this point in the game where the Oilers started their rally back in Edmonton, and that was in January. Then got three in the third, Oilers four, Leafs two the final. But here, McDavid and Hyman can't get untracked in the offensive zone, and Nylander slugs it up the right-hand side. McDavid backtracking up to Ekholm, and now Leon Dreisaitl lowered his shoulder into McMahon and then gave it away. Tavares, another turnover. He's been struggling with some puck maintenance, and now got away with maybe a hook on McDavid on the far side. Dreisaitl right corner, swarmed under by Riley. McDavid put it on Bouchard's tape. 
Gives it back to Connor McDavid. Tomorrow's tracking. Bouchard left circle. Slap pass over to Drysaddle. Couldn't get a shot away. And McMahon smartly just guides this inside the Toronto line. Bouchard turns and fires it up to Drysaddle. And a great play by Nylander because McDavid was streaking for a breakaway. Instead, it's Austin Matthews back the other way. He gave it away to Leon Drysaddle. We've had one turnover after another on this shift. Drysaddle up the middle. And Bouchard. Powered through by Holmberg, forced back inside the Edmonton line. And now Eckholm threw it across, and then two leaps skated right by a loose puck when Bouchard couldn't come up with it cleanly. Really ragged hockey here. Matthews inside. Domi, tap in, score. Holmberg, 3 0. Edmonton did not control the puck. Cleanly at any point over the preceding 20 seconds, and it turns into a three way passing play. Matthews to Domi to Holmberg for a tap in. Well, you could see that building for a while. And again, simple puck maintenance playing in direct style. Edmonton's not doing that. They're trying to make the more difficult play that's uh, there, and they overskate the puck, and Domi leaves a wide open tap in for Nylander's second of the game, 40th of the year. And that was after they'd gotten away with it, Bob, at neutral ice. Remember, Matthews and Domi skated right by a puck that was yeah. just sitting there. It's been a poor performance here from the Oilers. 8.02 time of the goal. Jack. There's still half a hockey game to play. Sorry, it was Holmberg and not uh, Yeah, Holmberg correction. is fifth yeah, yeah. from Domi and Matthews. Nugent Hopkins, but I think your point was they had gotten a second chance to make a clean play and still couldn't do it. Here's Fogel breaking in off the draw, hunting down a loose puck in the hash marks, but Benoit was able to force it to the corner, out to CeCe. Now Kulak a shot left point, juicy rebound issued by Samsonov, but the Leafs there to clear it. Connor Timmins with a puck up to Domi. Up to Holmberg, and he'll shovel it down low. And Holmberg was paired with Matthews earlier this season. He was season. good. He was good. Yeah, he's been moved around the lineup for much of this season by Sheldon Keith. And again, the injury to Marner forcing Toronto to be creative. Oilers bang it in deep. CC against David Camp on the right-hand side. Vogel cross-checked by Timmons. That'll be a penalty against Toronto. And the Oilers will be on the power play for the third time tonight. 11-10 remaining in the second period and a pivotal moment in this game to my way of thinking. The Oilers can start the long road back with a power play goal right here. In that earlier game, Dreisaitl scored with four minutes and change left in the second period to get Edmonton on the board. And then the Oilers erupted in the third. 2 nothing game versus a 3 nothing. True, true. And Edmonton. But there's still a lot of hockey. Let's see if they simplify. They're, what's undone them tonight, overcomplicated matters in every aspect of the game. Timmons in the box getting a second straight start again. He had not played since January. They scratched Brody, and they've scratched him again. He had not been scratched since 2013. Off the draw, Bouchard to Nugent Hopkins. Bouchard will move it around to Leon Drysaddle. Poke checked off his stick by Camp. Edmondson races over and launches it down the middle of the ice. Let's make nine passes before you shoot. Like, come on. You got to take a uh, page out of the Leafs book here. Bouchard skirts his way down the right-hand side, kicks it back to the on-rushing McDavid. Drop off for Nugent Hopkins, top of the left circle. Back to Bouchard. Nugent Hopkins. Now McDavid charging to the net. Finds Bouchard. One timer and Drysaddle stopped by Samsonov. That's a good read. And Drysaddle just slashed Edmondson. And this one about to boil over here. We've got pushing and shoving. Edmondson going right after McDavid again. Okay, this this has to end with Edmonton's Edmonton's tougher players. I'd put him out in the power play right now. Edmondson and Drysaddle are going to the box. Edmondson's been cheap shotting guys all game long. All game long. He's been sticking guys, hitting guys late. Yeah, Edmondson came over, gave Drysaddle an extra shot. Drysaddle slashed him, and then they went after each other. Edmondson's belly number 29, two minutes for slashing. Toronto belly number 20, two minutes for roughing. 
I think that might have been a power play for Toronto. It was and then good. Edmondson went after McDavid. I I think they were going to pull one out of the pile there. It's only one Edmondson way to handle this, Jack. After. You got to start targeting their best players too. Now remember, there's still a minute 24 yeah. left on the Oilers yeah. Atco power play. So, so Kane. Andrew Kane comes over to replace Drysaitel on the Atco unit, and this is a guy who could sorely use a use goal. Use a goal. Three assists in his last 15 games. That's a career-long drought for Evander Kane, who still has 21 on the year. So Kane will line up in the slot with Zach Hyman to McDavid's left. Without dry subtle, McDavid entrusted with the face-off duties. He not only won the draw, then he pursued the loose puck and ultimately feathered it out to Bouchard. Now Ryan Nugent-Hopkins to Bouchard. A drive and a save made by Samsonov with Hyman perched in front. Toronto races over. Camp fails to clear. Bouchard, Nugent-Hopkins fires and a save made. Another guy who could sorely use a goal and that's Ryan Nugent-Hopkins denied by Samsonov. A good save by the Toronto goaltender who's been perfect thus far on 14 chances and good work by Camp down the right hand side forcing Edmonton to regroup with 45 seconds to go on the power play it's Nugent Hopkins drop pass to McDavid he's got to check to make sure his teammates are on side he does that weaves his way across the line and Kane will kick it back to Bouchard for a reset then a bad pass from Bouchard hit Kane in the skate and Lilgren will pounce on it. Toronto has numbers. Lilgren to the net, trying to center it. Bouchard, a terrific play. That appeared to be a late developing three on one. Kane shovels it across to Adam Henrique, charging in from the left hand side against Morgan Riley. Works himself off a check, gives it up for Bouchard. Quick play to Ryan McLeod. McLeod to Bouchard. Open man. Bouchard one timer. Shane Samson of rebound sitting there. McLeod grabs it. Corey Perry can't pull the trigger. A lunging play by McMahon. And ultimately, Henrique did not keep it in. And Toronto will break out two on one, maybe three on one. McMahon gets it back. Cross ice. Tipped home. Holmberg makes it 4 0 Toronto with his second of the night from McMahon. We talked about the game a year ago here, which, by the way, was the last regular season game that the Edmonton Oilers lost, and they turned pucks over. On Edmonton led 3-1 in that game, too. Four of the seven goals, and tonight they have turned the puck over now on three of the four goals against. Only the power play goal. Did, it's just been an egregious. We'll see where the character's out here against Matthews' line. I mean, well, Carrick's good. between Fogel and Brown, and let's see what Chris Knobloch elects to do here with his club down 4 nothing. Leafs get it in deep. Oilers clear back through the middle, and now a steal by Connor Brown. He'll charge in against Timmons. Wrist shot, save Samson. Brown scored his second of the game in the waning moments against Buffalo, second of the season, rather. And now Carrick wrapped up in the corner. Looking to escape Benoit, and he'll shoot it back to the Edmonton line. Just a, a really, unfortunately for Oilers fans, a poor performance, and Leafs have been the better team in every aspect. McMahon and Riley with the helpers on Pontus Holmberg's second goal of the period. He came in with four. He now has six. <laughs> And Toronto has extended to a 4-0 lead on home ice at Scotiabank Arena. Back with more live second period play-by-play. -play. It's four dealers NHL hockey. The others, Radio Network. Be a savvy Edmonton hotel shopper. Book through EdmontonsBestHotels.com and receive up to $225 in cash rewards. There are over 50 member hotels to choose from offering their best value rates. EdmontonsBestHotels.com. Rewards with every booking. Live sky high with remarkable units for rent and for sale at Sky Signature Suites. 
currently offering amazing incentives on one and two bedroom rentals featuring designer finishes, resort-like amenities, and breathtaking views. All of this and more within the heart of Ice District, Edmonton's best address for shopping, dining, entertainment, and fun. Visit SkySignatureSuites.com and make your home high above the ordinary. Celebrating 70 years in the signage industry, William Huff Advertising is the most recognized name in the game. An in-house, one-stop shop for all of your design, print, and installation needs. William Huff provides quality graphic solutions for everyone. Here in our city of champions and throughout the nation, they're the preferred signage partner entrusted by many of the biggest corporations, pro sports teams, and organizations to bring their identity to life. Recognize the name, get in the game. WilliamHuff.com. Be a savvy Edmonton hotel shopper. Book through edmontonsbesthotels.com and receive up to $225 in cash rewards. There are over 50 member hotels to choose from offering their best value rates. edmontonsbesthotels.com. Rewards with every booking. You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. 4-0 hockey game in favor of the Leafs. Four goals on 18 shots for Toronto. And none on 15 for Edmonton against Ilya Samsonov, looking for his first career win against the Oilers. Well, Edmonton's made it easy on him. And his third shutout of the season. He's got 12 for his career. A fifth-year man originally drafted late first round by Washington back in 2015. Off the draw, grabbing the puck. Robertson whistles one, a save made by Skinner, and then he made a good stop on Edmondson from distance with a blocker save that sent the puck hurtling out of play. 8.14 to go, second period, alongside Bob Stauffer. It's Jack Michaels with tonight's game from Scotiabank Arena. Front end of a back-to-back for both clubs. Toronto will be in Carolina tomorrow, while Edmonton, a short flight to Ottawa, and a matchup with the Sens, and we'll have that for you at Four Mountain tomorrow. Cam Moon will be on the call with my broadcast partner tonight. Shot by Edmondson, and that was blocked. Corey Perry on it for the Oilers. Gets it back from DeArnay. Whistles a lead pass to Darnell Nurse, and here comes Edmondson right to left. Looking to get back in this game. Down 4 nothing. Edmondson fell down. Perry tried to move to the middle, but it was chipped away from him. And Ryan Reeves will move that puck up the left-hand side. That's a silly play made by Robertson that'll turn into an icing call. And Edmondson's going to pounce right here and get its top line out against Toronto's fourth line. And Nick Robertson, just a dreadful decision. Two strides short of the red line under no pressure to just inexplicably backhand it the length of the ice. So Chris Knobloch. Sensing the error will send out dry subtle for a face-off against Connor Dewar. Trying to give Edmonton a toehold in this hockey game. Puck hit the linesman skately on the Cleveland. Off the draw, draw, Dewar and Hyman wrapped up, and now Dry Subtle getting worked over behind the net by Lilgren. McDavid breaks loose, feeds Bouchard over to Eckholm. Deep in the left circle. Little spin move. Big matchup advantage here for Edmonton. Can the Oilers take advantage? Eckholm right circle. Got it back from Bouchard. One-timer Bouchard, and that was blocked. Rebound to McDavid. He'll tuck it behind the net for Zach Hyman. Rolls up top using a screen high slot. Over to McDavid. Feathers it back to Hyman. Streaking behind the net for a second time. Turns and fires, and a save made by Samsonov. He got a break that hit Lilgren and dropped right in the blue paint. And Samsonov able to snag it, and Toronto will get away with probably its poorest decision of the night. Zach Hyman scored a goal like that against Calgary in uh, game number one of that wild 9-6 game in that series. So, Toronto taking its time. Getting camp out for a defensive zone draw against Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Still between McLeod and Fogel. Bounced off Nugent Hopkins' shoulder off the draw and sent up ice by Noah Gregor. Flash back to center. Fogel did not handle the puck cleanly from CeCe. He'll take it behind his own net. Now build speed through the neutral zone. Warren Fogel dashing in left side around camp. A shot, stick save made by Samsonov. Rebound out. 
Cody Cece, Brett Kulak takes a shot, and that ricocheted into the far corner. Fogel behind the net for Ryan McLeod, angled off the boards, intercepted by Camp, played up the right-hand side and lifted down the ice by Morgan Riley. Settled by Nugent Hopkins, Cece punches it through the neutral zone for Jake McCabe. 6.20 remaining, second period. Toronto with two in the first, two more here in the second. And the Leafs with a 4-0 lead. They beat Washington 7-3. Behind a five-point game from Austin Matthews on Wednesday in its last outing. Without Mitch Marner tonight, Leafs looking sharp. Connor Timmons will backhand it in. Stuart Skinner hammers it up the boards. Timmons knocked it down, put it off the skate of Matthews a second time, and that was blocked by Carrick. And lumbering up the center is Matthias Yanmark. He'll regroup and eventually fire it in from the red line. Samsonov got a piece of it, and now Benoit against Connor Brown in the corner. Matthews trying to hunt it down as well. Ultimately twisted back to the point for Vinny D'Arnais. Fed along the boards through Timmons. Nurse steps up, put it behind the net. An attempted centering pass was broken up by Connor Brown. Had it deflected away. The Oilers stay with it. Enrique Brown rolls in front. Back door and Yanmark tied up by Timmons at the last instant. And the Oilers still unable to get on the board as it's lifted off the glass and fielded on one bounce by D'Arnais. Ultimately left for Darnell Nurse with five minutes to go in the period. Off the stick of Corey Perry. He's got to step around Lilgren to the net. Spins and a backhander short side. And that clattered off the pads of Samsonov right to Bobby McMahon, who has a goal and an assist tonight. Through the right-hand side, Nylander did not get a touch on it. Instead, it's Bouchard quarterbacking for Edmonton. Sifting it over to Eckholm. Rink wide for Evander Kane down the right-hand side. Avoids Edmondson. Heads for the net. Sharp angle shot deflected. Kane got his own rebound. Corey Perry broke free for just a moment. Shoveled it to McDavid. Now out to Bouchard and pounds it on net. Deflected, sitting there for a moment. And Nylander snatches it away. Skates it out of danger and drops it for Lilgren. Perry. Cross ice on target. Here's Tavares to Nylander. Left circle. Dishes. McMahon fires and scores. 5 nothing. McMahon having a big game. Two goals and an assist for the Wainwright native. Played his college hockey at Colgate in upstate New York. It's a great goal. And it started because Evan Bouchard hit Corey Perry with a shot. And Perry had to leave the ice, and then the Leafs gained possession. Nylander is able to stick handle his way out of a phone booth and we, we got ultimately a, set up McMahon. We got a team playing at the height of their powers right now in this game. They've come to play right from the get-go, and they killed an early penalty after Edmonton had a great first shift. And nothing but momentum since, and the Oilers are just second best in every aspect, unfortunately, tonight, John. And because it's the front end of the back-to-back, -back, I yeah. think Skinner's going to play the third period. Yep. I mean, it's not his fault, first of all. Kulak to Hyman, rolling in from the right-hand side. He was clipped by McCabe. Back to the point, Kulak. Over to CeCe, his wrist shot, and that was blocked. Fielded by Gregor, could not clear the zone. Kulak with control of the puck. Now McDavid, a reverse pop on Riley, out to CeCe, fires, and a save made by Samsonov. Oilers can't buy a break, though. They can't get a deflection. Well, that lands on their tape. It seems to go toward a Toronto stick tonight. But in fairness, the Leafs have, made have been their own. a little quicker. Toronto's made their own breaks, too. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, when you're the drowsier team, here's Drysaddle trying to slide one in front for Fogel, who whacked it off the pads of Samsonov. When you're the drowsier team, you can't expect breaks. Riley, after a hit by McCabe on Drysaddle, will take an icing call. With three minutes to go in the period, it's whistled down, and Toronto, a 5 nothing bulge. McMahon and Holmberg each with two, and Nylander a goal and an assist. He's up to 93 points. Bob, he's top six in the league, and I think William Nylander, I think you'd agree, we now see him at a different level sure. than we used to. 100%. He's getting paid like it, too. Got an eight-year extension, which kicks in next year, $11.5 million. And I think he's earned it. 
Nugent Hopkins wins the faceoff back to Darnell Nurse. A shot, and that ricocheted off David Camp. Hoist it up the middle, and that's too much on it. This will be another icing call whistled against Toronto. As Dewar, the inadvertent icing with 2.50 to go in the second period. And Edmonton looking rather forlorn at the way well, it's been the a, first 37 minutes of this game has gone. It's been a tough night. Nothing's gone their way. Toronto's come to play. Is that a haiku? Here's Nurse over to DeArnay. I didn't know you were so multi-talented. You got any more? I thought you were going to build on that. Another icing call coming against Toronto. Simplify, put pucks on the net. Check, check, check. Maybe they'll spit the bit. All right. That wasn't as good as your first, but not bad. Especially impromptu. Face off right side of Samson off. Three consecutive icing calls whistled against Toronto. Nugent Hopkins off the draw. Look at that. Sees it cleared by Gregor up the right-hand side. Reaching for it, Nurse. Gregor powers his way to the net, and it rolled right at the feet of Skinner. He's got it. Bouchard dancing away from John Tavares. Hits Ryan McLeod left wing. Turned over. Middle of the ice. Sitting there waiting for it was Benoit. Shot back in by Nurse. And Toronto has a handful of defensemen in its lineup that we did not expect Playing pivotal roles at any point this season for the Leafs. But they're hanging in there. Bouchard. Nugent Hopkins gives it back to Bouchard. A wrist shot redirected a couple of times. And Samsonov able to make a difficult save through traffic. He's been perfect on 20 thus far. And we've got a timeout on the ice. Minute 57 to go in period two. Edmonton just looking to get on the board here as we wind our way through the final two minutes from Scotiabank Arena. The middle frame. Three more goals for Toronto and a 5 0 lead on home ice at the expense of Edmonton. This is Four Dealers NHL Hockey. You are this radio network. Portage College graduates are incredibly employable. How does Portage know? 99% of employers surveyed said they would hire a Portage grad. Get career ready at Portage College. Learn more by visiting portagecollege.ca. At the Chop Leaf, Greens for Lunch gets you moving. Now you can shake, shake, shake it. Made with fresh greens and vegetables, choose from nine delicious, oh so shakeable salads. Or try it as a wrap or rice bowl. So, however you shake it, you'll enjoy something you can feel good about. Visit the Chop Leaf near you or order online today to enjoy some freshness on the go. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor is your number one stop to get game day ready. For a limited time, on game days only, Oilers fans can come by a Sobeys or Safeway Liquor store and get stocked up with a 15-pack of Molson Canadian or Coors Light, now $26.99 each. Available only at select Sobeys and Safeway Liquor stores in the Edmonton area. Must be 18+. plus. See in store for details. Sobeys and Safeway Liquor. Proud fans and partners of the Edmonton Oilers. Believing in yourself takes confidence. At Portage College, 93% of grads say their education gave them the skills and knowledge they needed for their careers. That's the kind of confidence that leads to great results. Learn more at portagecollege.ca. Listen on air, online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. No mincing words tonight. It's been all kinds of ugly for Edmonton in Toronto tonight a 5-0 deficit with two minutes to play in the second period on the front end of a back-to-back -back in Ontario face-off win for Tavares against Adam Henrique Evander Kane comes free and tries to center Nylander already for the multi-point night to his credit weaving his way into the offensive zone Nylander made one move too many nearly gave it away Tavares gave it right back and now you've got he and Enrique can tangle. Coming out of the fray is Nylander. Back with possession of the puck. One-timer coming Edmondson. That was stopped by a beleaguered Stuart Skinner, who hasn't got much help tonight. Bouchard, the outlet that clipped the tape of Corey Perry. Edmondson rifles a pass ahead for Tavares. And the Leafs captain back to Bobby McMahon. Short side, and he rung it off the bar, bidding for the hat trick. He's got two goals and an assist already tonight. 
And Skinner watches as his team will take an offensive zone draw here with a minute 12 to play in the second period. Oilers just one regulation loss in its last 12 games and nine in their last 49 coming in. But seismically outplayed for much of the night. Off the draw, McCabe works it down low. Austin Matthews trying to pull his way through CC, threw it over to Jake McCabe. Shoveled down low, Max Domi. He'll put it around the end boards. Holmberg, who has two goals tonight, could not keep it in the zone. Less than a minute to go, second period as Connor Brown will chip and charge in. McCabe put it up the boards. And now it's Domi to Austin Matthews. Three on two for Toronto. Morgan Riley, Holmberg, curled it in front. That was intercepted by Nurse out of the reach of Connor Brown with an outlet pass. And that's the story of the night. I mean, Edmonton has just been a hair off whenever they've had a look or two at developing a play. Holmberg tried to slice it to the middle. And Nurse tied up Austin Matthews. McDavid left it behind the net for Nurse. Final 20 seconds here. And the Oilers not moving with a great deal of alacrity. McDavid, McDavid got slew-footed or something. Finally, Edmonton attacks. McDavid in across the line. Seven seconds. Took a shot. That was blocked. And at the horn, Toronto leads 5-0 through two periods. There we go. And you've Finally. got Nurse going after, I believe, Edmondson. And they end up at the bottom of a rather large pile with the two linesmen on top. Nurse definitely wanted a piece of Joel Edmondson. And Noah Gregor came flying into that mix as well. And Edmondson's going to be killing a penalty to start the third period. You think it's only Nurse? Yes. So with 40 minutes complete, the Toronto Maple Leafs in complete command of this hockey game. Shots are a pedestrian 23-20, but Toronto has dominated throughout. And Nurse got a 10-minute misconduct. Yeah, so he, Nurse is gone for the first 12 minutes of the third period, and this game is gone, it would seem, yes. unless something remarkable happens. And Toronto is a team that has come from behind 5 nothing down after two, as you know, Bob, before losing in overtime in a game earlier this season. But having said that, what does Chris Knobloch do in terms of managing minutes for tomorrow's game against the Ottawa Senators? Well, uh, first thing I do is I break up McDavid and dry settle. Okay. I would have done that after one. I didn't like you what, said that. Yep, I didn't like what we were seeing. Um, Joel Edmondson's gotten in the head of Edmonton. I mean, Darnell does this again, just like he went after Hag. Like that's you got to pick your spots in the right time. Like, well, it's five nothing. I mean, does the penalty really matter? It's the. It's you got to do it earlier is what you're going to yes. say. If you're going to do it, go he, after one he, of their top guys. Right, and go after not Joel Edmonds. Not go after Joel Edmonds. Right. It, there's and you you think that there's more gamesmanship there. Evander Kane's had a rough night. He's had a rough 15 games. So this is there's some things happening here that have been brewing for a while. Jack, in fairness, what's their record over the last? Yeah, nine, one, and two in their last 12. And they haven't played great. And Chris Knobloch has told us that both privately and publicly that they're doing just enough to win. And that's a skill in and of itself. And maybe, Bob, this is the proverbial wake-up call. I mean, is that fair to say? Oh, I'd say so. I mean, this is... <laughs> they just overcomplicate things. They give teams, good teams, momentum at home early in games by their approach in the power play. Instead of simplifying right from the opening game, uh, right from the, um, you get a power play. The, it's, we're almost at the stage now, Jack, where I don't want them to get a power play on the road in the first three minutes because they want to make 19 passes to score the perfect goal. We've talked about what Todd McClellan did in San Jose when they were 50 win teams every year. 15 sh or within 15 seconds of an offensive face-off win, puck had to be the net. And you attack the net, create some chaos that way. So very disappointing night for the Oilers. Some players that have struggled for a while having disappointing nights. Just get out of the third period here and move on.
Bobby McMahon with two goals and an assist tonight for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Pontus Holmberg has scored twice, and William Nylander has a goal and has set up another. Tavares with two assists. Austin Matthews just one point, but Toronto hasn't needed him to be at his best. It's a 5-0 game, and of course, Ilya Samsonov at the other end in net has been perfect on 20 shots. Front end of a back-to-back -back for both clubs, and Toronto looks to be the club that will sail into tomorrow with that winning feeling. It's 5-0 through 40. Reed Wilkins and Rob Brown straight ahead. This is Ford Dealers NHL Hockey. The Oilers Radio Network. Hey, Paul Brandt here. You know what I'm a fan of? Alberta. The wide open spaces, the highways and byways, and a rugged, beautiful terrain that I'm proud to call home. Maybe that's why I'm also a fan of my Ford F-150. It's tough, capable, and smart, which makes it a natural fit for roads like these. So if it's a new truck you're looking for, look no further than the truck Albertans love to drive, F-150. Head into your Alberta Ford dealer and tell them PB sent you. C-H-E-D Edmonton. Get your tech on and tell your smart speaker to play 630 Jazz. Edmonton's News. Today's talk. A chorus entertainment radio station. Stay connected with your community and enjoy the latest updates and exclusive access to concerts and events by becoming a 630 Chad Insider. Don't, Don't miss, miss out, out on a single moment. moment. Sign up now at 630Chad.com. And click on Chad Insider Newsletter to become a vital part of Edmonton's premier news and talk community. 630 Chad, Edmonton's News, Today's Talk. Where Edmonton stays informed and entertained. Today and every day. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. 5 0 Maple Leafs leading the Oilers after two. If the Oilers actually did something worth listening to again, we would play it now and we would call it the highlight zone for Century Casinos. All in, all games, all season. Century Casinos, three great locations Edmonton, St. Albert, and next to the Edmonton International Airport. Welcome to the winner zone, but virtually nothing positive to tell you about the Oilers' performance through two periods in Toronto. 5-0 uh, Leafs, Rob, and uh, an Edmonton team that, quite frankly, has been dreadful in my mind. Uh, they, they have. It, it's one of those games where the Oilers have created some things offensively, but defensively, uh, nada. I mean, all three goals in that period were just mental mistakes by the Oilers. The first goal, Bouchard takes the wrong route to get a puck in the corner. We saw that a, a week ago against McKinnon in Colorado, but he takes the wrong route, gets beat by Matthews, and then doesn't go to the net. He just watches, and all of a sudden, he leaves his two men on a three-on-two, back door, wide open, empty net. Bouchard made the first mistake, but then the second mistake was just not going to the net. He just stood and watched. Henrique, a mental mistake. Uh, he touches the puck, it's offside. He knows it's offside. I understand what he's trying to do, and, and you feel for him. He touches the puck, puck comes back in your own zone. But if you don't touch the puck, you all of a sudden have a three-on-one against. And then the last one was a three-on-three that Connor McDavid was watching the puck. His man stopped, was wide open, and puts the puck in the net. So the Oilers have not been very detailed tonight defensively. And when you play against good teams, and the Maple Leafs are a good team, despite the number of players they have out, the Leafs are a good team. They will take advantage of big mistakes, and the Oilers have made a lot of those tonight. McMahon has two goals. Holmberg has two goals. Nylander has the other one. Uh, the Oilers will be shorthanded for two minutes to start the third. Nurse got two plus ten right at the end of the second period. And, Rob, the uh, the goals are bleeding together. The, the third goal, so Holmberg's first goal, that's the one where you said Bouchard takes the, the wrong mm -hmm. angle into the corner. I wish they would have rewound it further when they showed the replay on TV because, yes, obviously, you know, Bouchard goes in at the wrong angle. Matthews walks out. It turns into a tap-in. But before that, the Oilers had the puck under control with three guys back and one Leaf just doing a token, you know, neutral zone pressure type forecheck. And, the, and they chopped the puck right to the Toronto guy. That's how it wound up back in the Edmonton zone to begin with. Yeah, it, it, just a lot of mental mistakes like that. Uh, the, the last power play, uh, Kane was out there. He throws the puck back to Bouchard. And Bouchard does what he's supposed to. He skates to the middle and throws it back, and Kane wasn't there. Kane just skated to the middle, all of a sudden goes off his skate, and then Toronto gets a, an odd man break going again the other way. So it, it's 
the, the Oilers are off in this hockey game. And give credit to the Maple Leafs. They've played well, and they've played physical. And it started in the very first shift of the game. On The Oilers are on the power play, and Edmondson, a big trade day pickup for the Leafs, he ran McDavid. Like to the point where, like, oh my, I don't. You don't see Connor get hit very often. And from that moment on, the Toronto Maple Leafs have been very aggressive, been very physical. Uh, a number of big hits. McCabe's gone after Leon a couple times. Edmondson has been in the heads of all the Oilers players. So the Oilers, uh, it's been a frustrating night for them, and they haven't. When things have gone sideways, they haven't had the good response tonight. Their response tonight has been frustration. Yeah. Well. And I, I found, I mean, the shots are 23-21 for Toronto, so not as lopsided as the score. And the Oilers actually outshot Toronto in that period by a little bit, 15-13. But I, I f- there's nothing, I mean, with the exception of maybe a couple chances. I mean, Kulak had that big slapper. I, I think Samsonov stopped, uh, I think Hyman might have shot it. He stopped one, maybe it was CeCe. He stopped one that you could tell he didn't see, but that's the exception. I, I find when the Oilers have the puck in the offensive zone, it's not getting to that dangerous area. They're not creating a lot of chaos around the Leafs' net. No, there's there's always a Leaf that is got a stick in the way or a body in the way. Uh, there's not the guy standing wide open. Like For example, it was a three-on-three for the Maple Leafs, and McCann gets the puck, actually stops the puck. And Nylander tried giving him a one-time. McCann stopped the puck, had a time to readjust, reset and shoot the puck and that was on a three on three so th- we we haven't seen the others have those kind of opportunities in this game they they just they look sloppy they just the passes the others have had uh, enough chances on their power play or enough power plays to be able to put themselves back in this hockey game and their power play hasn't looked good and this is the first team that i've seen that has been aggressive and i said that after the first the leafs have been aggressive on their kill and the others haven't been able to respond on that so uh you hope that the third period the owners get a little bit momentum going just feel a little better about themselves uh, as i think ottawa is winning today so they're, they're going to play a team that finally has won a game possibly tomorrow you want to feel better about yourself because right now the Oilers, if you look at their bench and they've showed a couple shots of it on the tv there's a frustration level that we haven't seen in a while with the the edmonton Oilers because things have gone so well uh the toronto maple leafs has been the better team and i think the score is very indicative of that yeah, no doubt about it. And as you as you referenced, the, the Oilers are especially getting carved off off the rush, either off a turnover, off a bad decision. And when when Chris Knobloch is asked about, because a lot of times, Rob, as you know, uh, you know the other team's media comes through town, and especially if it's an Eastern team. Okay, you haven't seen Edmonton, you haven't seen them in a while. How come you've improved? He, he talks about goaltending. He talks about the PK, and he often talks about defending the rush better. Uh, which sometimes is neutral zone turnovers as well, and that's that's been a huge problem tonight. It has puck management hasn't been good for the Oilers. They they've turned the puck over, and then they're backtracking. When the Oilers are playing well, they're a very good backtracking team. Where, for example, if a Matthews is skating up the ice and he's looking at a defenseman, he's also being pestered by someone from behind. And for a player, it's really hard. You got two guys you're trying to uh, keep the puck away from it while trying to find someone to pass to. Tonight, we're not seeing that. The The backtrack hasn't been good. The Oilers have uh, not been good uh, being on the defensive side. Uh, the Oilers defensemen have been left out, hung, hung out to dry a few times. There's been a couple odd man breaks against. And a great example is when Henrik let that puck go in and didn't touch it. Mm-hmm. The Toronto Maple Leafs realized right away, they jumped, they pounced. No, no Edmonton Oilers was pouncing back. They knew Henrik was in trouble. He was the high guy, and they knew exactly what he was doing. The Leaf, three Leaf defenders jumped into the play, and the Oilers didn't. They were hoping that Hendrik would make a play instead of getting in the right place defensively, and it ended up in the back of the Oilers' net. All right, 5 nothing Toronto after two. Four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. Every time the Oilers play, you win. Because for $4.95, you can grab a KFC Big Crunch sandwich every Oilers game day. That's right. For only $4.95, you can bite into a KFC sandwich filled with a crispy seasoned chicken breast and topped with lettuce and mayo anytime the Oilers hit the ice. KFC, it's finger licking good. Offer only redeemable in restaurant at participating KFC locations. Other conditions may apply. It takes some courage to get out there and travel. You never know if your bags might mysteriously vanish. Or if that guacamole is going to come back to haunt you. Or if the plane just never takes off in the first place. 
But through it all, you have a partner in Alberta Blue Cross. Our travel insurance lets you take the security of home with you wherever you go. Whatever life brings, be ready for it. Find travel insurance today at ab.bluecross.ca. MIC is a leader in medical imaging and the official medical imaging provider to the Edmonton Oilers. Make MIC your choice. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, the game doesn't stop for injury. MIC sports medicine imaging specialists can help you get back in the game with a timely and expert diagnosis. Go where the pros go. For a location near you, visit mic.ca. With Global News, I'm Thomas Dias. A suspect is facing an arson charge after a fire in a Terrace Heights neighborhood on the city's east side. It began early this morning with officers responding to a report of a break and enter at a building complex near 74th Street and 101st Avenue, followed by a fire breaking out at one of the businesses on the main floor. The suspect was the only one injured in the blaze taken to hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. And a local group celebrated its senior fraud prevention program today at the Chateau Louis Convention Center. Edmonton Neighborhood Watch President Anne-Marie Tivierge says information is crucial in avoiding fraud, asking seniors and families to stay connected through social media or by attending scam information sessions around the city. Some seniors are not aware of if these are scammers. They're prone because they're trusting. The Eppington Police Service says in the first half of 2023 alone, local victims lost more than $70 million to crypto and investment scams. News on demand at 630Ched.com. Foreigner, live in Edmonton. Foreigner is back. The Farewell Canada Tour. You is coming. Friday, May 10th, Rogers Place. Foreigner, with special guest, Ted Pins. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.ca. Foreigner, the Farewell Canada Tour. David trying to come in with speed. Here he comes. McDavid shoots. Top shelf. He scores. Hey, Edmonton. Rogers wants you to stay connected to your Edmonton Oilers. Honor McDavid! Fantastic! Catch every goal on Canada's largest and most reliable 5G network with Rogers 5G mobile plans. To learn more, visit rogers.com forward slash 5G. That's rogers.com forward slash 5G. Real Canadian Superstore is your one-stop shop. Check out their flyer for their PC Ultimo offers. Deals on club size and no-name items. Always low-priced everyday items. There are so many ways to save for real at the Real Canadian Superstore. At the intermission, brought to you by End of the Row Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Edmonton Oil Kings just uh, getting going in Red Deer tonight, and then they host the Rebels at 4 o'clock tomorrow at Rogers Place to... In the season, the scoreboard presented by Pizza 73, official pizza of the Edmonton Oilers. Edmonton in Ottawa tomorrow. Senators lead the Devils 4-2 early in the third. The Predators win again, 1-0 over the Red Wings. Blues beat the Wild 5-4 in overtime. Flyers knock off the Bruins 3-2. The Islanders beat the Jets 6 Three Panthers lead the Rangers 1-0. That is after one. It is a nightmare tonight for the Oilers in Toronto. 5-0 Leafs going to the third. Four dealers NHL hockey on the Oilers radio network. At the intermission has been brought to you by End of the Roll Flooring Centers. Let's get flooring. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. Legacy Heating and Cooling is the number one heating and cooling company for people who want heating and cooling. Because you'll save a bundle by bundling. Then you can use hot, cold, hot, cold. Coming through my staff, do what you're told. Turn up the heat, turn up the cold to the vent. Start pushing out tornadoes. Bundle my furnace with some AC. Gonna get a deal from Legacy. Oh, yeah. Save a bundle when you bundle your new furnace and AC from Legacy today. Plus, no payments and no interest for one year. That's how you build your legacy. Legacy Heating and Cooling.
Blue Collar Work deserves big dollar perks. Get a heavy wallet with heavy metal equipment and rentals. Heavy metal equipment and rentals is hiring heavy equipment technicians, maintenance supervisors, PM servicemen, maintenance coordinators, and pretty much every other position that makes Alberta go. We help move the earth that makes Alberta grow. So why not work for a company that makes your bank account grow too? Visit heavymetalequipment.ca to find your new career. Heavy Metal Equipment and Rentals, helping you move the earth. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. All games, all all season. season. You're listening to the Oilers Radio Network. Disappointing effort through 40 minutes for the Edmonton Oilers tonight. Down 5 nothing. Never really been in it. And they'll be serving a two-minute penalty. Power play for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Nurse not only got the two, but he got a 10. So he's unavailable until eight minutes are left in regulation. So as we enter the third period, the Oilers once again on the kill to begin the period. And a face-off win for John Tavares against Ryan McLeod. Jack Michaels, Bob Stauffer with you. 40 minutes complete. Toronto two in the first and three in the second. McLeod, Fogel, Dayarnay, and Brett Kulak to start the third period on the penalty kill. Brought to you by our friends at Nap Auto Parts. Here's Lilgren behind the net for Nylander. Goal and an assist tonight. Domi out to Tavares, a drive, and that was redirected into the corner. Tavares, two assists tonight. Inside, got it from Matthews, and both had shots blocked. Kicked out, and Warren Fogel will bring it up by shorthand at three on two. Fogel right wing to the middle. Wrist shot, McLeod denied by Samsonov. One of his better saves. He's got 22 on the night. Nylander bulldozed by CeCe, and the Oilers trying to hunt that puck down. Domi will kick it back to Timothy Lilgren. You never know in these games, a minute gone by in the third period, halfway through the Toronto power play, because there was a relatively lopsided defeat in Raleigh, North Carolina back in November. But the seeds in the third period were planted for Edmonton's 16-game winning streak. Now, am I suggesting the Oilers are going to win the final 14 games after tonight? No, but every period matters. So... You know, Bob, take what he says with a grain of salt when he says, Al, let's just get out of here. What he means is play a decent period and build some momentum for tomorrow. Here's McMahon. Because Edmonton played a good third period against the Carolina Hurricanes back in November and two days later, shut out Washington and away they went. Oilers. Connor Brown snaps a pass to Eckholm. His shot just missed the net shorthanded. Remember, Toronto's permitted nine shorties this year, and the Oilers are going to kill off this penalty in rather routine fashion. Two minutes gone by, third period. Edmonton's back at full strength. Hyman steps out of the box. And again, Nurse unavailable for the next 10. David Camp to Benoit. He'll roll it into the far corner. Taken against the boards was Noah Gregor. Tomorrow's opponent for the Edmonton Oilers will be the Ottawa Senators. They're on top of New Jersey four through, four two rather, through two periods in Newark tonight. Here's Gregor in over the line. Beat Kulak to the net. Kick save made and a lunging stop ultimately reeled in by Calvin Pickard who has come on for the third period for the Edmonton Oilers. We suspected Skinner might play the third, figuring that Pickard would start tomorrow. Now, the fact that Pickard comes in for the third, is there any thought then, Bob, that Skinner would be an option to start tomorrow against the Sens? I guess he is. I'm just trying to think the 7-4 loss here last year, was that the last uh, loss Edmonton had on the season last year in the regular season, or did they play Winnipeg? In regulation. In regulation. They lost in overtime, you'll recall, against the Vegas Golden yes, Knights. Yes, And that was their only blemish that, over the final 15. And that was the one-point difference for if they won that game yes, in regulation. absolutely. Turned out to be a mammoth difference. Here's Bobby McMahon in the corner, trapped by Cody Ceci. Given up. Vinny Dayarnay. Skinner's night concludes. 18 saves on 23 shots. Here's 
Dreisaitl lining up a shot in the slot, and that one deflected wide of Samsonov. Can't hit the net tonight, can But they? I'm just wondering, with Pickard back in, yeah. and maybe it's another... Chris Knobloch tends to play the long game in his decisions. Yeah. Maybe it's another message for the team. Hey, you didn't give Skinner a chance to win tonight. We're going right back to him tomorrow. I'm just wondering. Connor Timmons with control of the puck for Toronto, and it went up on the heel of a stick, and he's had a bit of a tough night as he throws it out of play. That'll be delay of game, and Edmonton will be on its fourth power play of the night. Toronto penalty number 25. Two minutes delay of game. Second penalty for Timmons. And the Oilers will send out their top unit. Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, Bouchard, and Hyman. If nothing else, again, to set a certain tone and establish the way they want to play moving forward. Timmons not helping his cause if he wants to remain in the lineup tonight. Well, he was the difference for why Edmonton did not end up getting Darcy Kemper in a trade jack a couple of years ago. Here's Bouchard to dry settle. Power play for the Edmonton Oilers. McDavid tried to go inside to Hyman, then rolled it in front, taken away by McCabe, but a weak clearing attempt is easily knocked down by Bouchard. Drysaddle gave it back to him. Bouchard able to hold it inside the blue line. Then they run it, Drysaddle, and a good play by the Leafs to turn the pressure up. And Camp is able to clear as far as the Oilers' blue line. Bouchard in the middle of the ice. Leon Drysaddle weaves his way around Holmberg, protecting the puck and then flashing it back to Bouchard. Four minutes gone by in the third. McDavid, Drysaddle loaded up for the one-timer. Instead hit Nugent Hopkins in the slot. And a glove save made by Samsonov. One of his best stops of the night. Robbing Nugent Hopkins, a guy that, again, Edmonton would like to get on track. Too much. His one goal in the last 17 came on the power play, Bob. He does not have an even strength goal in more than a month. Yeah. And yet the team is 9-1-2 and two in their last 12. Absolutely. And Nugent Hopkins has made two tremendous defensive plays that led directly to victories over the course of that time. 100%. So Dreisaitl lining up against Nylander. Still a healthy minute 11 to go on the power play, and now Dreisaitl chased out again. This will be McDavid against Nylander. Tie up off the draw, wrestled free. Benoit ridden to one knee by Zach Hyman, would not let him get a clear, and it's eventually pushed back to Dreisaitl. He'll dish, one-timer ripped, and a save made by Samsonov on Bouchard. That was powered toward the net by Bouchard. You know that was north of 90 miles an hour. And Samsonov able to come up with his 25th stop of the night. Nugent Hopkins worked it free for Dreisaitl. Loading up again. Dishing off. McDavid, no stick for Lilgren. He's helpless. Dreisaitl, cross ice. McDavid, point blank, tried to dish. Poked free by McMahon. And yet Toronto can't clear. Bouchard in the high slot looking for a lane. McDavid the same, top of the left circle, fires in front, tipped home, and Zach Hyman picks up his 49th goal of the year. The Oilers are on the board, a power play goal at 4.59. Hyman from McDavid. I'll tell you, Zach Hyman would rather have a 5-1 lead right now than have that goal, but the Oilers will take it, and again, it's about just trying to win the period and build some momentum for tomorrow night. Good play by McDavid. Bouchard will get the second assist, I think. Which would be his 68th point of the year. He ranks fifth amongst NHL defensemen in scoring, and that spoils Samsonov's bid for his third shutout of the year. So now 5-1. Backhanded in, off the draw by Max Domi. Chopped toward the blue line. McLeod freed it up. Here's Fogel. Given away by Edmondson. Fogel a shot. That was blocked. Domi can't clear. And the Leafs bobbled up in sustained fashion for the first time tonight. Finally, Timmons up the right-hand side. Domi hits Matthews. Wrist shot to save Calvin Pickard who comes on with a 10-4 record on the year and a save percentage of 919 as we talked about Skinner stopping 18 of 23 this evening. And I believe his removal may 
indicate that Chris Knobloch is pondering a sure. switch in what he had originally planned as far as the goaltending. Well, every, what's the old Mike Tyson line? Everybody's got a plan. Until they get punched in the face. And the Oilers got punched in the face tonight. 5-1 our score off the face off. Matthews unable to hold the zone. Connor Brown over to Matias Ekholm. Heading for the Toronto net, curling one back behind. And that'll be lifted by Domi down the middle. Big hit by Eckholm. As he leveled Holmberg. CC to Sam Kerr. Rolls in. So the Atco power play on the board for the Oilers. Now one of four tonight. Leafs are one for three. McDavid and Bouchard with assists on Zach Hyman's 49th of the year. Trailing only Matthews in the NHL. It breaks a tie for second. Came in with Sam Ranhart. Here's Brown giving it up. Yanmark turns, and that shot smothered by Kampf, who forced it back through center, and Domi will lift it behind the Oiler defense. Eric gave Edmondson a little poke there. Here's Edmondson in the high slot, maintaining the offensive zone for Toronto on an attempted Ekholm clear, and now Connor Dewar takes a silly penalty. He chopped down Matthias Yanmark, and that's 185 feet away from his own net. And Edmonton will go back on the power play, and you score here, and maybe you don't leave just yet. Six and one half gone by in the third period. Toronto's five goal lead is down to four, and an Edmonton power play straight ahead. This is Four Dealers NHL Hockey, the Oilers Radio Network. Portage College graduates are incredibly employable. How does Portage know? 99% of employers surveyed said they would hire a Portage grad. Get career ready at Portage College. Learn more by visiting portagecollege.ca. From the biggest stadiums to the coziest holes in the wall. From house parties to porch hangs to pride celebrations. From your favorite fuss shop to your local Indian spot. From noodle bars to sports bars to salsa bars. There's a Molson with your name on it. Canadian Ultra XL. Molson. Everyone in. Must be legal drinking age. For years now, we've been warning Edmontonians on the hazards of our stormwater facilities. While they may appear to look like still ponds, there is moving water beneath the surface, which makes the ice dangerously... The unpredictability of stormwater facilities makes them treacherously unsafe for all winter activities, even walking. So think twice. Don't go on the ice. A safety message from EPCOR. Believing in yourself takes confidence. At Portage College, 93% of grads say their education gave them the skills and knowledge they needed for their careers. That's the kind of confidence that leads to great results. Learn more at portagecollege.ca. You're listening to Oilers Hockey on 630 Chad and on the Radio Player Canada app. 13.25 to play third period. Oilers... Now down 5-1, back on the power play for a fifth time tonight. They're one for their previous four. They just scored. Five minutes into the period, Hyman from McDavid and Bouchard. Now dry settle. Off the faceoff, McKay. Behind the net, Joel Edmondson has plenty of time to clear and eventually launches one over the outstretched Bouchard. If Edmondson has any thoughts of a miraculous comeback, a convert here is an absolute must. Bouchard kips it back to McDavid. He'll get it across the line, left to right, dry settle. Over to Nugent Hopkins, top of the left circle. Gets it right back from Evan Bouchard and broken up by Bobby McMahon. Too predictable. Toronto's given up eight power play goals in its last seven. And the Leafs could use a kill here just to stabilize, just to not give Edmonton a notion. McDavid up the left-hand side, Nugent Hopkins. Back to Bouchard, over to Dry Subtle, top of the right circle. McDavid, button hooks away from Nylander, pushes it out for Evan Bouchard. Across to Nugent Hopkins, trying to go cross ice, that was tipped. Bouchard to McDavid. Bouchard, one-timer, and that was blocked, deflected up on the plexi. Hyman able to control, dashing over his Holmberg, and he's able to force it back through center. 
45 seconds left on the man advantage. Top unit stays out. Here's Drysaddle with McDavid wrapped up, slithering down the right-hand boards. He'll float it back to Bouchard. Walks the line, gives it back to Leon Drysaddle. Fires it across, broken up. David Camp clears to McMahon, and Bobby McMahon will dart down the right-hand side. He'll beat Bouchard one-handed on net, and Calvert Pickard on in relief makes the save. Oilers top unit not going anywhere. McDavid will move it left-hand side for Evander Kane. He stays out for the full two. Kane back to the point, Kulak. The rest had changed. CeCe to the corner, and Connor McDavid steps out. Looks, loads, dishes, Kane tipped home. Corey Perry makes it 5-2 with three seconds left on the power play. And Edmonton has life. It's 5-2 with 11.28 to play. A real nice look there from Evander Kane. Sets up Corey Perry for a sixth goal as an Oiler. Connor McDavid will get the secondary assist. Corey Perry with his 10th of the year, sixth as an Oiler. Kane and McDavid, the helpers, and back-to-back -back power play goals have sliced Toronto's five-goal lead to three. Adam Enrique wins the face-off from Matthews, and it's shot in. Joel Edmondson up the right-hand side. Timmons does not get it out. Centering pass, and that was poked on net. Samsonov had to make a tricky save. CC winds and fires, and that was well wide of the mark. Kane is swinging a miss, and Austin Matthews will pick up a loose puck and bring it through the neutral zone to Max Domi. Right circle crosses, wrist shot, save made wow. on Nyes by Calvin Pickard, who pushed hard off that left skate and fought it off. 11 minutes to go, 5-2. Corey Perry tucks it up the right-hand side. Adam Enrique. Kane was checked as he hit the Toronto line. McCabe backing off. Left side for John Tavares. He'll cough it up. Bouchard with Tavares barreling in on him. Forcing it across to Matias Ekholm. In turn, Bouchard activating down the right-hand side. Connor Brown looking for Fogel. Chopped down low by Fogel and taken by Morgan Riley. Turned it over. Connor Brown tried to stuff it inside, and that was negated by Nylander. But Tavares was slow to move the puck. And Edmonton hems Toronto in here. McCabe will flip it out through center. Bouchard gave it away to, to Tavares. Cross ice, and that was poked away from Nylander. Oilers cough it up at center. And it's dumped in by Connor Dewar. Played by Pickard. Aggressive as ever with puck handling. Ekholm kicks it back for Evan Bouchard. He was tackled by Dewar. Got away with one. And now McDavid. His shot was blocked. Dewar was the man who took the offensive zone penalty. And he might have gotten away with a tackle there on Matthias Ekholm. Toronto some foolish penalties here. And has given Edmondson some life. Hyman off a turnover in the neutral zone. Dashing in left-hand side, looking for 50 against Edmondson. Using a screen, rolling up top, turning, and dishing to McDavid. Net front presence is Nugent Hopkins. McDavid put it down low for Hyman. Edmondson wraps him up. Forces to the half wall. Leafs can't get a clear. Kulak across, Vinny Dayarnay shot. Blocked by the Leafs and cleared by Noah Gregor. Poked by Dewar as far as center, nine minutes to play. McDavid tried to roll back into the zone and could not get around David Kampf. Morgan Riley with control of the puck. Holmberg mishandled a pass down the left-hand side. Burrows in on CeCe. Dreisaitl hitting Ryan McLeod. Went right around Jake McCabe. Heading for the net. Centers. And Fogel could not kick it to his forehand cleanly. The Leafs able to chip it softly back across the red line. Holmberg doing the honors. 8.25 remaining third period. Edmonton trailing 5-2. McDavid assists on power play goals for Hyman and Perry. After Toronto led 5-0 through 40. The Oilers will be guilty of an icing call here down the left-hand side. And some nervous moments for the first time here at Scotiabank Arena. But the Oilers, with each passing shift, start to see the hourglass disappear. But as you said, Bob, you win a period, try to build some momentum for tomorrow.
Going with a little bit of size in the wing here for Tavares and Nylander. Ryan Reeves out there. Tavares, the offensive zone draw against Leon Dreisaitl. I agree, normally following an icing, you wouldn't necessarily think that Ryan Reeves is the guy you send over the board. Well, I think Toronto has won the physicality matchup in this game. They've won the gamesmanship battle, and a big part of it's been McCabe and Edmondson on defense, and it's supported by guys like Reeves, and Dewar got a good shot in on uh, the Edmonton Oilers. Zach Hyman as well, Jack. Off the draw, Fogel will take it out of the zone, shovel it in deep. Samson off plays it up the left wing boards for Nick Robertson, who turned it over. Robertson has been a little shaky out there. Reeves at center, backhands it in. Robertson in on the four check. Ekholm looks for the home run. It's not there for Yanmark, and that'll turn into icing against Edmondson with 7.48 to play in the third period. Likely goaltender tomorrow for Ottawa will be Anton Forsberg. Didn't we see him get hurt? In yes. Ottawa, was that a couple yes. years ago? Where he, where he suffered ligament injuries to both knees. Now, as it turned out, they weren't as bad as they first appeared. And he's been able to resume his career, though he hasn't had a great season. He's nevertheless played to a 500 record for an Ottawa club, hopelessly out of playoff contention. They can score, though, but they give up a ton to Ottawa. Well, and part of that is they haven't had terrific goaltending this year. Now they're up Forsberg or Corpusalo. Pizza 73 out of town scoreboard. They're up 5-2, Jack. That yeah, looks like they're going to win that game against New Jersey, who's tumbled right out of contention after a terrific year last season. Shot by Max Domi, tipped by Matthews on net, and that's held by Calvin Pickard with 7.43 to play in the third period. Pickard thus far, perfect in relief. He stopped five shots and allowed the Oilers to crawl within 5-2, but time's a-wasting. 7.43 to play in Toronto. The Leafs still seemingly in control. They lead it 5-2, and we're back with more live third-period play-by-play in just a moment from Scotiabank Arena. The Oilers Radio Network. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. Chemco is building industry across Canada, and now they're on the lookout for civil and electrical project managers, estimators, and superintendents to join their dedicated team. Why Chemco? Because Chemco cares. They put people first, offering top-tier compensation packages and an unwavering commitment to safety. At Chemco, safety isn't just a priority. It's everybody's business. Ready to be part of a team that truly values you? Visit chemco.com careers today. Over the last decade, the world of work has changed dramatically. It's a change that can cause a disconnect between a company and its employees. But a partnership with Aon can help by making decisions that create a more flexible, engaged, and resilient workforce. Aon's experience and expertise, global understanding, and advanced analytics ensure that every client is better informed and better advised so that they can make better decisions. Whatever the next decade brings, Aon is in the business of better decisions. Can drinking a little less alcohol give you the energy you want? 6 a.m. workout, you're on. The sleep you need, no more tossing and turning. And the glow you're after, I look and feel better. Moderation, it's worth it. Be inspired at drinksenseab.ca. A message from AGLC. Listen on air, on online, and on the Radio Player Canada app. This is the Oilers Radio Network. Pontus Holmberg and Bobby McMahon scoring twice tonight for Toronto. William Nylander with a goal and an assist. And as a result, Toronto led 5-0 through two periods, though Edmondson has gotten a pair on the power play here in the third. Likely too little, too late. Sam Carrick able to win a faceoff in his own zone. Yanmark with an attempted clear settled by Max Domi. He looked to hand off to Matthews, but was stripped from behind by Carrick. And here's Connor Brown rushing it in from the right-hand side. Oh. As the Oilers look Yanmark's to make a game gonna of fight. it. He's going to fight Domi. And and Domi are going to fight. And Yanmark lands a right hand early. Domi swings wildly with a right and eats a couple of chopping right hands. Domi short with a right uppercut. Then lands a right hand and a second right hand and a third right hook. 
Yanmark able to tie up and take Max Domi down. Good job. Yanmark landed three big shots early, and though Domi fought back, Matias Yanmark, who completely unloaded in his previous bout this season. He's got two NHL fights this year, three for his career, and he and Domi Edmonton sent off. 13, five minutes each for fighting. And you know what? It's one of the reasons why Matias Yanmark has not been the odd guy out right. in Edmonton's lineup. 100%. He kills penalties, and he'll stick up for his teammates. And Max Domi is a guy not a lot of people are eager to fight in the middleweight division. No. He ate a couple. Domi got him good a couple times, but Yanmark did But fly. Yanmark landed early, and I'll tell you what, Yanmark didn't go anywhere with that right hand. He did not go anywhere. So, by the way, these... five minute fighting majors, and now you've got Nugent Hopkins, McDavid, and Hyman reunited. And, and we'll start. see whether we see that tomorrow against Ottawa. 100% you're going to see it. McDavid wins the face off a shot, ricochets wide off the tape of Bouchard. McDavid able to maintain in the high slot. Couldn't beat a trio of Toronto defenders, but a blast by Eckholm had to be kicked out by Samson off from distance. Now McDavid on the rebound. Bouchard, Eckholm, point blank, and a shot deflected up on the glass, and that'll be taken and skated out by Bobby McMahon. Oh. He threw an elbow into Connor McDavid, and I believe got away with it. He felt McDavid and kind of lifted that elbow up and caught him in the chops. Now McDavid back on the attack, darting down the middle. Shot Hyman, and a tough save made by Samsonov up near the collarbone. That one stung him, and Hyman's shot is a bit underrated. We think of him as they did back in the old days with the Toronto Marlies as Shaq Hyman always going to the paint, but that was a rocket well, it's and it stung Samson off. He's constant, never-ending improvement. That was the Japanese business model, Kaizen, after the Second World War. And you know what? That's who Hyman is, is he's constantly never-ending and improvement. You, you knew that, right? I've referenced that before. It's what community college... Uh, it was actually University of Alberta, but that's okay. Yeah, you were at the University of Alberta. No shots at the U of A. My son's going there next year. There, there we go, except your son's going to graduate. Yeah, I was going to say, I believe he... Well, if I had you as my dad, I would have graduated <laughs> too. That's... You going to make him work full-time while he goes to school? <laughs> Face-off coming. Left side of Samsonov. Dry subtle. Lining up against Camp. Bob, I... I believe, in fairness, I know you were working, but I also believe you had a, a lack of <laughs> uh, intensity, schooling intensity at that time in your life. Uh, you're probably right. <laughs> Here's Dewar. Oilers got schooled through 40. Been better here in the third, but it's... <laughs> Dry saddle reunited with McLeod yes. and Fogel. Should be noted. Here's CeCe loading up, dishing off, shot coming, save Samson off, rebound in front, battled for, dry subtle, couldn't get one on net, lunging his camp, and finally forced up the left-hand side. Connor Dewar on the wing, tried to center, and that had no chance for Noah Gregor. Clear path to the net for Dewar, but he didn't shoot it. Fogel the other way, one-timer to save made on Fogel by Samson off, set up by CeCe. He's got the pocket now, Samsonov, with no helmet. With 6.13 to go in the third period, a whistle and a faceoff coming in the Toronto zone with the Leafs still leading by a count of 5-2. to two. Edmonton with 11 third period shots as compared to five for the Leafs and a couple of power play goals. But still, Toronto a healthy lead as we come down the stretch. Samsonov getting repairs on that mask. He's played well tonight. He's got yes, 30 he saves, yeah, and he yeah. had no chance on either of the goals, in my estimation. Tip in, point blank tip ins by Hyman and Perry on the power play. Yeah. And Toronto has been undisciplined, especially here in the well, third. Well, they period. could have been called for a couple more. Right. I mean, they've they've not played a good third. Sheldon Keefe isn't turning cartwheels. His right. club has a tough game tomorrow and a tough turnaround against the Carolina Hurricanes in Raleigh. Off the faceoff, Darnell Nurse. Checked by Nyes, wrapped up on the half wall. Nurse eligible to return, as we told you, at the eight-minute mark, so he's out there. And it's finally lifted up the left-hand side. 
and down by nice. That should be icing, and there's the late whistle with 5.58 to go in the third. You said it. Why is that a late whistle? Like, what were they waiting for? So, a draw to be held to the right of Samsonov. Enrique now centering Kane and Perry, and these are all lines that we now expect to see tomorrow in Ottawa. Because Chris Knobloch, unlike a lot of coaches, he doesn't finish a game and then start with the original lines that he went into the game with. Usually, if he likes something that he finishes the game with, he'll start the next game with it. Lead pass, left-hand side. Holmberg burrows his way in, went headfirst into the boards. He pops back up okay as Evander Kane clears back to center. Coughed up by Austin Matthews. Darnell Nurse down the middle. He gains the puck and tried to center, and Holmberg knocked it away from Corey Perry. The funny thing is about tonight, Toronto's puck maintenance hasn't been that great. There's another turnover right as I say that by Holmberg, wrapped right around by Kane, and then wow. slung off the side of the net by Corey Perry. But the Oilers have just been worse. Bouchard lets one fly, and that's blocked by Nice. I mean, how many times have we seen Toronto make sloppy turnovers tonight? Yeah, and not just here in the third, but the Oilers have been, have kind of refused to kind of pounce on those mistakes and capitalize on them. Another icing call against the Leafs. 100%. Yeah, it's been an, it, oh, they're pulling, here we go, the early pull, 5-2 game, yeah, five, five minutes. Yeah, 5-2, you might as well go for it, right? And they are going for it. I wouldn't pull them here. It's 0 for 1 in this situation with an empty net goal against. What, you just play it out? No, I... Or do you pull them with three minutes to I go? I pull them with... Matthews, tie up against Leon Drysaddle, back to the point, here's Eckholm. With five minutes to go, the Oilers go six on five. Ekholm to Bouchard, Nugent Hopkins to the net. Hyman gave it up, and a shot was stopped against McDavid. A clear by Nyes at center ice, trying to pull his stick free. That could have been a penalty against Bouchard, as he had Nyes and Holmberg completely wrapped up. But all Toronto can do is muscle it down the ice. McDavid back in his own zone, building speed through the neutral zone, down the middle, and he's checked by Benoit. Sends it out to the point. Dry subtle spun. What timer Bouchard wow. just missed the net. Rebound Nugent Hopkins. Here's Eckholm walking the line. Dry subtle right circle. 5-2 Toronto. Four minutes to play. Shot Dry subtle blocked in front. Edmondson can't get it out. Dry subtle serves it up for Eckholm. Right point. He'll move it to Bouchard and get it back in the high slot. Dry subtle right circle. From the goal line in front, McDavid couldn't hit Hyman. Tavares failed to clear it. Toronto again just can't get it out. Swept around the boards by Eckholm. Little spin off the wall by Bouchard. Now McDavid, open man, score! Dry side to able to redirect it home, and now it's 5 3 with 3.39 to go, and Samsonov is hurt. He cannot get up, and you might be seeing Joseph Wall coming into this game. Leon Dreisaitl will pick up his 36th of the season, and the Oilers have cut it to 5-3. It was Tavares failing to yeah. clear it, and he's one of the Leafs tonight that has been guilty of some really poor plays with a puck. And you can hear a pin drop in this arena right now because Samsonov's played so well. Of course, Wall had kind of wrestled the job away and then he got Well, hurt. first it was Marty Jones. Yes, who played against Edmonton. It's the first time in the history of the Toronto Maple Leafs, a span covering more than 100 years, that they've had three goalies with at least 10 wins this yep. season. Surprised we're not in commercial break here, Jack, with 3.39 left. A six-on-five goal for the Edmonton Oilers. And that one just guided into the net by Dreisaitl who smartly didn't try to one-time it or anything else, Bob. He just stayed strong on his stick. David and Bouchard will draw the assist, as you know. And Connor McDavid is up to 115 points now on the season. 
And Wall's going in. Yeah, this is it for Samsonov. He's going to leave with 32 saves on 35 shots. You don't see that a lot. Both goalies coming out of a game. So now, Sheldon Keefe taking the opportunity with Wall warming up to call his team over and settle them down. And the Leafs, their play with the puck in this period has been just as bad as Edmonton's was in the first two periods. And it wasn't that great in the first two. It was just the Oilers just kept turning the yeah. puck over. Again, Jack, I think the Oilers had some guys so amped up tonight that it came back to bite them early. Tried to do too much. Officially Needed. now it looks like Samsonov is going to be credited with 31 saves on 34 shots. And so. now nervous moments here. Pickard is back in the pipes. They've got McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Hyman back out with the game now officially back on. Three and a half to go. David Camp wins the faceoff. Edmondson up the right-hand side. Ekholm jumped up. Edmondson still with a puck up the left-hand side. Bouchard the steal. Could not make a clean zone entry. And Pickard caught no man's land. Has to retreat to the pipes. Now Ekholm brings it to center. And as Dreisaitl shoots it in, Pickard will go to the bench. Toronto hasn't put this game away yet. It's 5-3. Poked by Edmondson. And here's an attempted clear by Dewar. Bobby McMahon forces it to center. Six on five, dry subtle to McDavid. Right circle, cross ice, open man. Ekholm, one timer, Bouchard, save! Whoa, loose in front, and dry subtle could not slam it home. Back to the point, Bouchard, right point. Knocked down by Camp. Here's McDavid. Dry subtle loading up. Bouchard, top of the right circle. Ekholm backing off. 2.45 to play. 5 3 Toronto. Here's dry subtle. Right face off dot, peering inside. Goal line, McDavid. He'll roll up top off a screen. Weaving his way up top, dry sidle. Right circle shot deflected away. Wall comes in with a 909 save percentage this year. Echo to McDavid, slap shot in front. Oh, it's off the post. Nugent Hopkins set up by Hyman. Missed a point blank look. McDavid left circle. Hyman rolls up top for Bouchard. 210 to play. Redirected by Drysaddle and a great save by Wall. It's Drysaddle right corner. Rubbed free. Camp to Dewar. And he backhands it down the ice. He was not yet at center. They'll wave off icing. The Oilers desperately need a change, and they'll make one with a minute 50 to go. Bouchard has it picked off. Matthews could not get around him. Bouchard cross ice. Holmberg went for the steal. It's kept alive by Perry. Holmberg again. This time Lilgren fires, and that pinball back into the Toronto zone. Riley chops it ahead for Nylander. Snapshot hit his own man. Holmberg forces it in deep. 90 seconds to play. 5-3 Toronto. Darnell Nurse up the middle for Evander Kane. Soft chip to Perry. Now Kane soccers it down low. Hit by McCabe. Cleared out to Nurse by McLeod. And a shot was blocked. Rebound CeCe. Down low for Perry. Sharp angle off a wall. Now Evander Kane left point. Darnell Nurse to CeCe. Right circle snapshot blocked by Matthews with a minute to go. Riley can't clear. He's held up with Perry. Adam Enrique serves it up for Darnell Nurse. Top of the right circle, shot tipped in front, Perry denied by Wall. Rebound Matthews, he'll fling it down the ice. That'll be icing call, and that's perfect for Edmonton. They'll get their top players back out there with 46 seconds still remaining, and the Leafs in a game they led 5-0 after two, clinging to what is now a 5-3 lead. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, what a setup by Hyman. He hit the post. He had the net wide open. Just, to... Just hit the right goal post. Dry cycle against Matthews. Nugent Hopkins and Hyman stacked in the slot. Got to jump in and help him out off the draw if it's a tie up. It's not. Face-off win by Dreisaitl. Here's Bouchard curling it off the wall. Nugent Hopkins down low. Riley, good positioning. Keeps it against the end boards, but Ekholm escaped.
Holmberg, now it's Bouchard looking for McDavid to the middle, deflected away. Holmberg backhands it smartly off the boards, and that'll kill the clock. Down to 25 seconds. Ekholm from center, blasted on wall. He makes the save. Riley up to Holmberg, did not get it out, tried to get too cute. Matthews will shoot toward the empty net and score. And finally, Toronto is able to salt it away but not before Nugent Hopkins came within an eyelash of making this a one goal game with more than a minute remaining. From a Toronto standpoint, way too difficult. And from the Oilers standpoint, I go back to what I said in that Carolina game back in November. The Hurricanes had it well under control. As you'll remember, Bob, it was 5-2 after two, and the Oilers had several quality looks to get it back yep. to 5-4. And then the next game against Washington triggered what was an eight-game home or an eight-game winning streak. I'm not saying that no. that kind of streak is ahead, but the Oilers will certainly feel better about the final 20 than they did about the first 40. The final 10 seconds melted by Toronto. And Joseph Wall, in a very real sense, comes in to get the save in relief Six. of Ilya Samsonov. How many did he end up making? Did Just he, three. Just three. And one off the post. So Wall ends up three out of three with a friendly goal post because yep. it's 5-4 it's with a different more game than a minute that. 30 yep. to play. It's different game. It's a, I mean, Toronto really comes close to blowing wow. it, and and that would have been obviously from an Oilers standpoint one of the greatest comebacks in the history of the club it falls short but nevertheless the momentum built yeah. for tomorrow I, I against think, Ottawa I, I think that's fair uh, and Jack I think you know what I think you go to McDavid I don't think you start the game with McDavid dry settle and Hyman I think you go to that when your team 